<laughs> now I'm suspicious, to be honest. Now I'm so we, suspicious. This is an intervention. We brought him on here to talk shit. First of all, in case you, in case you didn't fucking know Abba, he's known as the Gazette Golden Pony right now. Right? Oh, yeah? He's yeah, our yeah. golden boy. Don't, don't fucking piss off. Yo, don't let that press get to your head, man. It already has. <laughs> don't worry. You, listen, you, you start getting a bit of recognition. Everyone's going to come at you like, yo, you're, just, you're so arrogant now. You know? You just, <laughs> I got a few. I got <laughs> like, a few, it's his fault. Yeah, like, it's. I don't know. I, try, I didn't even mention it. And people are like, "Oh, your head's getting big." And I'm like, yeah, I'm being fuck sincere you. Sincere right now. It's, like, it, it's the most mom? annoying. Shit. You brought this up, not me. I'm just. Doing you know the YouTube stuff. I'll never bring it up to people. Never yeah. bring well, it. Well, how I, are you I, gonna I, bring I, it up? I, but I wouldn't be like, "Oh man, you go check out my." I never say that in my entire life. People are like, "Oh, so you think you're a YouTube star now?" I'm like, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> I, I'm here to do comedy, <laughs> and people always bring it up to me, and then they act like I'm big headed about it. It's the most annoying shit in the world. That's what happens to me? Like, oh, you think you're cool now? You think I'm like, holy shit, mom. Like, calm down. Just <laughs> ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Your mom. You think you're <laughs> you, cool? You think you're hot Remember, shit. Remember, you're a piece of shit, yeah. Pentelis. <laughs> Remember where you came from? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Points. I thought this was your house originally, I swear. I yeah. mean, when I saw it. Oh, I yeah, like, okay. When he's <laughs> but the address, I was like, oh, it's Park it's X. Probably, he lives in Park X. It's probably right. a home, yeah. No, you can't do this shit because, number one, you know what I noticed? People that, do, if, if I don't know, it's different with, with us. We know each other. But if there's somebody that you met once, and you're like, yo, come to a podcast at my place, they're like, I don't want to get raped. Like, it's, yeah, I don't know you yeah. to come Maybe to a house. female. She might think that, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little strange. And I'm more comfortable here because you could. Fi- there's so much more space. We could film other shit. So the studio helps. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice. Very professional uh, setting, if I may say. Are Thank we on right so. now? We're on right now. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, uh, in terms of bringing people home, there's uh, you guys heard about that Montreal photographer who was bringing girls back to, to, to his like photo shoots? Nah, bro. And then he'd try to rape them? Get the fuck out. He's huge. Super popular. You guys haven't heard of this What's guy? What's his name? No, not at all. Call him out. Super popular. Why is he so popular? Uh, <laughs> like, you're making it sound on, like it was a Instagram, good thing. On Instagram, he's like 100K followers. He's like a f- f- world-renowned photographer. Does he take butt photos? Is that why? No, no, no. He takes, like, legitimately nice photos. Really? He's and super talented. So he takes great photos and, uh, and rapes? Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty common <laughs> combination. Like, <laughs> it seems to be, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Two and two go together. Well, not necessarily photos, but... It's like the Chappelle bit from last special, remember? He he takes better pictures, but he rapes. He also he <laughs> rapes and he saves. That's crazy. I didn't know that shit. Yeah, it's and a super big thing. And so he recently reactivated his Instagram account. And he's trying to do more work. So women have been launching this like online campaign to tell him to go fuck himself. See that I understand though, because if he's legitimately raping, it's not like somebody didn't like him and just started making shit up. If he's raping people, he's like, let me take you home to my den, right? Then he shouldn't be um, freely taking people's photos. Bringing him back home, hundred percent. I agree. Some creepy ass shit. I yeah. want to find. The, I want to find the name so people know. You got your phone? Whip out your phone. You That's us. What you been up to? Oh man, you know, sleep until two p.m. Comedy living life. The, living the good life. So what happens when you get that Gazette? Yeah, yeah thing. once you get that Gazette, you know you're like, I don't need to. I don't need to do shit. I could. I could stay up until six six a.m. watching conspiracy docs. He's you know, get royalties. The, living, <laughs> the, living the dream, man. Playing Goldeneye. Yeah, on the sixty four. <laughs> yeah. Fucker. Yeah, that I'm jealous of. I used to have such good times. <sighs> it's great times. I'm trying to read more. That's what I want to do. I want to be I feel like I need to be smart. I used to read a lot as a kid, and uh, now fuck. Ever since this, these fucking smartphones came out, you know. You feel like you don't read on your phone? I read on my phone, but it's not the same. It's so like it's just little snippets of information. Even if it's an article, just the size and the light factor doesn't make me like really take in the information or like care, you know. And then you're reading something, you get a message, you go to something else, and then it's like, oh, let me fucking watch a video of. I don't know, some guy feeding ducks in the park for six hours. I actually understand you. I get distracted, too. And also, I, I, I'm guilty of reading headlines now. Like, just reading the headline yeah. and making an uh, oh, assumption. Yeah. And it's the word. Like, I was watching yesterday. They were talking about Trump. Cause he's, Trump uh, apparently is racist. He talks shit about Haitians and Africans. And then I read what he actually said. He said, uh, why do we want people from shithole countries coming here? <laughs> shithole It was countries. even more racist when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, the thing is, the countries that he said are shithole countries in Africa... All right, he didn't name. He just said shithole countries in Africa. So you don't know who he's talking about. What are he's talking about? Legitimate shitholes. Well, I mean, I, I think it's too big of a generalization. <laughs> There's some like really strong emerging, you know, economies. But I think the biggest thing was like he he mentioned Haiti specifically. <laughs> I, First of all, uh, the fact that he thinks it's in Africa is comedy gold. Yeah, I don't know if he actually thinks that, but I know one thing that made me laugh is uh, wait, Haiti's dr- not in Africa. <laughs> 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 but. Uh, yeah, on the campaign trail, he gets on and he goes to that little Haiti in, in Miami and he's talking to the Haitian people. And he's like, I want to be your champion. I want to foster a relationship of respect and admiration. And but then no then more behind, and then And everyone's like, yeah, fucking Trump tells it like it is. But then behind closed doors, he's like, that country's a fucking shithole. <laughs> So I'm like, which one is it? Does he tell it like it is or he's a little bit of a hypocrite, a little bit of a liar? You know what I'm saying? I, 
I can't make fun of him. I was saying that on Twitter earlier. Like, I want to make fun of this. But literally last week, I was calling North Korea a garbage country. So I'm in no position to be like, oh, I can't believe he said that. I was like, well, like, and North Korea, I think, can we not agree there's some shit countries out there in North Korea? Pretty shit country. It's yeah. pretty fucked up. It's the problem is when you say shit country, you're kind of like putting the people, the people of that that's country what they, within, yeah. which is not, you know, North, I feel bad for North oh, Korea. Oh, of course. Like, they don't even know reality. They're Apparently prisoners. They're, they're told you know? that there's a world war and they won and there's like nuclear fallout. They don't understand that this exists. They don't, they don't know it. It fascinates me so much. I was talking about staying up till 6 a.m. I watched so many North Korea. I've seen every North Korea doc there is. Really? I almost went there. Yeah, because I lived in South Korea crazy? for a bit. Yeah, that's, that's why I didn't go. I was you can do like tour there. visits, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to do that by propaganda visit, see what it's really like, just to be in there. I don't yeah. know, fuck. I have too much of a big mouth. That's why I don't go there or Saudi Arabia. I'm going to get in trouble. I yeah. say too much stupid shit. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that over there, especially over no. there. No. They'll lock you up and then send you back in a coma and you'll just die back home. But I don't know you'll if I could hold man. myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it's a good test, but I don't know if I could hold back. Like, they're going to say something like, actually. <laughs> 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 you see those guys who run across the picket fence line? Like those yards and get shot at by the North Korean soldiers just so they can make it to South Korea and they barely make it. Like one guy got oh, shot like yeah. eight times trying to cross and he made it. But he said it was worth it. Wait, he got shot eight times and he it made a it? Soldier, it was a soldier who defected. He didn't want to live in North Korea anymore. He had like worms in his stomach. He's all kinds of fucked up. So he's like, I'm out of here. So he mm. ran across the border and the North Koreans shot at him trying to get him to come back. And yeah, They shot him but he survived. He's the 50 cent of North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> He's releasing an album next The month. worst yeah. part is he wouldn't understand the reference if you yeah. told it to his face. <laughs> yeah, 50 cent. He's like, I don't get any, I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't get any of this. The big problem with like the Trump comments on Haiti is like, and just saying a country's a shithole, especially he, with Haiti specifically. But he didn't say, uh, uh, to, to be fair, I don't think he said it was in the breadth of that. Uh, and then they were talking about Africa. And then he said, why do we want people from these shithole countries coming? So I don't think, he, I'm joking, I don't think he thought that uh, Haiti was in Africa and that he's, he was talking about Haiti. Yeah, no, but he but definitely he did was. shit on Haiti. Yeah, he, he did, did yeah. shit on Haiti. And the problem with that is, like, when, whenever there's dialogue like that from a president, especially the United States, it doesn't acknowledge the role that the Americans played in making Haiti a shithole. Meaning the, uh, you know, there was basically an occupation of Haiti from 1950 to 1934. So they went into Haiti, they rewrote the constitution, allowed for foreign land ownership, they changed everything in the country. They took over the country. Yeah, they yeah. fucked over their rice industry, so their main source of Ford, they had to buy from Americans. So there's all kinds of things that they did to cripple the economy as outsiders. So it's easy to say it's a shithole country, but if it smells like shit, it's partially because you shat in the in country. There, yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, they, 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 they did. They did. So Come on, that not was the issue. American empire. <laughs> <laughs> say it they so. would never do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, don't be calling around like fucking saying people's birthday cakes are shit if you sat on them. Like, no, if you, you sold it to them. If you sold like, Where'd you them? get this garbage cake? Yeah, you kind of fucked them yeah. over. So it's just like, and I don't know some people are going to be like, oh, here we go, black people blaming the white man. But I'm just, if you cut someone's legs, they can't run the race. You know what I mean? What do you want me to say? You did do it, so... You can't just go afterwards and say, well, why is this crippled? But I don't know why he's representing all white... You know how like white people in America are like, wait, this is not representative of us. Like, it's one person. I don't know. A good chunk of them know. are, though. That's the problem. Yeah, A good that's... chunk really are. I have fr personal friends. Friend. I have one friend. I think he's like, friends, personal. <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a lot for most people. Yeah, no, I have one friend. I haven't seen him in a while. And he's a fucking avid Trump supporter. It's so weird. Even... I See, I, talking about headline, I didn't even read any headline. I didn't see anything. I just saw people tweeting about him talking about shithole countries. So I didn't even look into it. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, another fuck. I just don't even want to give this guy attention anymore. Almost. I agree. I'm just like, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Yeah, everywhere. It's a Trump, Trump, Trump. I'm just like, okay, enough. The guy's fucked. You Hopefully think they overdid away. it on this one? Like in terms, because when I saw it at first, I was like, all right, but then I was like, Man, I want to say I'm not really surprised. Like, I feel like hasn't he said this before? No. Like, you know, sometimes you hear you you read a headline and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe this person said or did this. I totally believe it. Like I read, it, I was like, "Yeah, this is what I expected him to think." I didn't expect him to say something else. No. What did you think they thought? The yeah, no, but bit, honestly, yeah. isn't that like? But he uh, made a lot of appeals to minorities, especially to black folks. He made a lot of appeals. So, even though this is not directly racist, because I mean, a lot of people feel like a lot of those countries are shithole countries. If you think that, I don't really care. As a country, yeah, a lot of countries are shitholes. Shit, my country, Greece, for a while was a shithole, right? Yeah, but it's more the undertones. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you only single out African countries or any black countries, then people are going to feel a lot more subject. Yeah, yeah, especially on that topic. So, a lot of racism is never, rarely over. It's not going to be like those goddamn niggers. That's uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying. They, they eat too many the nigger cookies or whatever. It's not First of all, <laughs> you're taking that conversation out of context. Like I said that uh, just based on the cookie eating, yeah, not for everybody. This is based on you. I don't know why you're generalizing. 
I like cookies. But uh, wait, are these N-word cookies right here? Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about that. You know, it's like it's like racism with a cute comment afterwards. Is that like you know like 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 coon bubbles or something? What like, the fuck is that? I don't know. It's not a real thing, but it just sounds like a funny term. It just doesn't. It takes the edge off the, the racist word. But oh. um, mm. but yeah, it's just more the undertones when you listen to him speak that sometimes it sets people. I think with this comment. It was very dismissive of a lot of people's heritage and their cultures because, I mean, to reduce a country to just a shithole, especially when it has a rich history and it has different aspects that it contributes to the world, is a little bit uh, minimizing. You know, if yeah. we were just say, like, oh, Canada, just snow. You guys would be like, oh, fuck you. You know, that's not all well, we it have happens to. all the time, though. <laughs> yeah, but it is yeah. annoying when people yeah. come up to you and like, oh, it's just a bunch of igloos. It's yeah. like, no, it's probably a bit face. more accurate, though. That yeah. Trump's yeah. You. Yeah. No, but your point is good. The, yeah. Your, your very valid point of, like, listen, the, like, the American empire went into a lot of these third world countries, which are have vast resources and just decimated it, privatized everything, brought their corporations in so that they could get these resources resources at a much cheaper cost, put money in their pockets, buy a new yacht. And then the country does become a shithole. But yeah, yeah you're right. It is. But what's the reason for it becoming a shithole? Say, I mean, when Greece was in trouble, right? Like everybody was talking about, oh, they're lazy. They don't want to work, this and that. The economy tanked. It was from foreign banks. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it was from in a couple of, um, you know, uh, bought and paid for politicians that allowed them to come in and strip yep. the country of his resources. So Greece was in a fucked up place, but the people were getting blamed for it. Like in German media, they're like, oh, the fucking Greeks, uh, you know, they're they're lazy, they're not contributing, which was the furthest thing from the truth. It was actually their banks. It was Deutsche Bank was one of the people responsible for fucking Greece over. So that I understand. I also do understand that if you're going to call a country a shithole, people are not going to... People are going to take it personally. They're going to take it as the government or the infrastructure. They're going to be like, wait, is he saying that I'm a shitty person? So, yeah, I do see what you're saying. However, I did ne- I never expected him to think any differently. No. I wasn't, when I read it, I wasn't like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said it. I was like, I, f- I honestly felt like he said this before. I don't feel like it was news. Mm. But I, I think I think he's never said anything like this necessarily about, you know, African Americans or black people in general. The second thing is like... He you says being, about a whole continent. He says about Africa. Yeah, but mm. you being it's from Greece, countries. you know the culture. You know it has a rich history. Mm-hmm. To just ridicule it, to just the shithole that... Yeah, exactly. Know, ...would be insulting. And I also, in, in your instance... You know, with the whole crash. I think what's really interesting is you know what happened in Iceland. Oh, yeah. They had the same issue with bankers and the politicians being sold out. And they said, fuck you, we're not paying back this debt. They had a fucking referendum. They sent everyone to jail, all the politicians. And then there's like, we're never paying it back. And they just got booted out of the EU and now they're flourishing. They're Quidone. flourishing. It took them a, a year or something. Yeah. That's what I wanted Greece to do. I wanted Greece to go that route. To just declare bankers like, fuck you guys. Because they're not helping us, right? They're not. Uh, Turkey, for example, Erdogan, they're. Their fucking uh, sultan, I guess. This guy keeps making new laws to give himself more power and more terms. So he says that by 2019, they're going to have, um, I forgot how many of the Greek islands like, he's going to go take over. Now, part of the, if you're in the European Union, you'd assume that an England, a France, would be like, whoa, whoa, what did you just say, motherfucker? Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's a legit threat. Mm-hmm. Everybody's silent. It's literally Gre- Greece looking at everybody like, guys, when hello? you help? Like, what's going on here? You want money, but, <laughs> yeah. but you're not going to fucking help secure? Like, what's going on? Those so, islands are mostly college kids on vacation, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From like Boca Raton. It's, a, no, it's, all, it's all UK kids that are going to get uh, slaughtered. Um, but it, it is crazy that they don't, they, they look the other way. They don't want to help. Okay. And you know, the whole thing about like when I speak about American involvement in Haiti, like imagine if France or England went into states and rewrote their constitution. And then what? shout on them for the shit rules. Like, why do you guys have laws like this? But do you realize how much, how crazy Americans get about the Second Amendment and the, you know, the fr- freedom of speech and all that kind of stuff? How they always reference their constitution. Imagine a foreign entity coming and rewrite what you do and then changing the laws. I mean, the whole foreign ownership thing is such a big deal because if you think about it, Haiti's not that big of a country. They did it on purpose. They did it on purpose, right? This is in 1934. They did it on purpose because the impact of this is that when foreign powers come in and they buy up all, all the land, you see what happens in Vancouver. Right. They did it to Greece. They're doing it to Greece. Yeah, it's so crazy in Vancouver. Chinese people have just bought up all the property, so everything is so absurdly because they just all raised the price unanimously. They all decided. So it's unlivable for people. Imagine being from a poor country where you have no resources. You have no way of buying the land once it's open to people. So foreign powers buy it all. So now all the money that you make and that you pay for rent is leaving. You know, if you want to farm, you got to pay money to be able to farm in your own country to foreign lands. So it really crippled the economy and never gave the country a chance to kind of grow. And as a result, to call it a shithole today is to dismiss all the impact that you had within it. So, yeah, I was quite, I wasn't necessarily mad. I just thought it was dismissive. And I think a lot of people don't take the time to learn about why things are the way they are. Yeah, oh, he, I don't, I honestly don't think he knows, to, to be fair. Um, to be fair to him, like that's what we, I don't think he understands. I, I, people give too much credit. But you can't say to be fair to him. He's the president. I At the end of the day, you, you have a responsibility have, as the president yeah, of the United States. But yes. I don't. Uh, you peop- should know. Right. A but bare title, minimum. Yeah. Uh, we've learned the title does not dictate behavior. I feel like everybody gives him so much credit. Like he says stuff that children will say. 
And then people are trying to read into it. What did he mean by this? It's like, guys, he's not, you think he's some kind of an intellectual and he's outsmarting people. I think what you see is what you get. I don't believe there's layers to this guy. Yeah. Everybody tries to make it seem like he's a fucking criminal genius. genius. Yeah. I honestly don't think so. I think what you see is what you get. I think when he won, he was surprised. He's like, do you remember when he got out, when it took him a couple of hours? And he's like, ah, yeah. And in the back, he's like, how the fuck did this happen? You know? Yeah. I, I mean, that's that, that's yeah. convenient. I think a lot of people want to believe he's just there by accident because then well, it's not an accident. It, it gets to reduce the, the impact of his candidacy. I mean, I, I'd like I to think believe it that has too more I, of I'm an not impact. a big fan. I think it has more because you don't know, at least if you had, like, let's say Hillary Clinton, right? I don't like her. I think she's an evil fucking person, but at least she knows how politics work. The American mm. people, as a, if she'd be out there talking to other countries, she'd be presentable. Do you know what I mean? She wouldn't be out there being like, fuck this shithole and fuck that. She'd bomb and she'd kill a lot of people in the Middle East. That's 100% sure, like she's always been doing. But... Behind closed she, doors. Behind like, closed Fuck doors. Shit exactly. Home. That's the thing. All That's the difference well, in the presentation is the difference there. Her and her husband, their, clean, their foundations are the ones oh, who yeah. fucked hey, over Haiti. Haiti, all this money that they raised for Haiti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the funniest things on the campaign trail. Trump would honestly call them out for ruining Haiti <laughs> and like how it's a beautiful country. <laughs> and then he's like, shit, whole country. And it kills me because I got video footage of like a whole bunch of Haitians be like, Trump is going to save us. And oh, I'm like, oh, no. I can't wait to make the compilation. Honestly, when you talked about Trump fatigue, I completely understand. Yeah. Because yeah. since I've started my channel, we haven't done a single Trump video, and there's been plenty of material, <laughs> but we just avoided it because everybody's everybody's it's, talking we're about. We're just him. flooded yeah. with it. Yeah. We're just flooded with it. Yeah. You know, like it, it, fucking. You know, if you're drowning in an ocean, don't hand me a cup of water. You know, like yeah, it's enough already. And there's stuff that comes out of nowhere. Sometimes when we're filming that uh, the news, the ju- this just thing, while we're filming, somebody will, will show on the phone like, "Hey, look at what he said. Look at this tweet." It's while it's just. It's everywhere. He's, there's just something about him every day, and, and it's hard to, to navigate the internet now without seeing a pro, or it, it's mostly against Trump, but it's hard to be on the internet and not see that shit. No. It's just there. It's everywhere. You, the benefit is, like, you know, we're going to have this crazy story to tell our kids. Like, we're not even going to mention Barry. Like, Brock is going to be an afterthought yeah, after Trump. Like, true. this guy's going to be so ridiculous, it's going to just occupy all our kids' story. Like, you won't believe the shithead that we had for a president. But apart from saying stupid things, yapping... I was expecting, not that I wanted it to happen, but I was expecting a lot worse. I was expecting him to launch a nuke, or I was expecting a lot. I don't think he's going to do any of that. I think he's, because he's confused. Like, he's sitting, <laughs> he's sitting there yapping. I think he still hasn't comprehended the fact that he's the president of the United States of America. He represents the free world. This has not set in at all, because he's still acting like he's in a reality show. Yeah. He's firing people left and right. Yeah. Well, well, that's what he is, right? He's a reality <laughs> TV show star, and he won a reality TV competition. <laughs> yeah. That's what the election is. Yeah. You have two people, essentially, every four years to pick from. Two people. Yeah. It's so stupid. In a democracy of that size, yeah. how can you possibly represent one? Even if you have 10 up there, how are you representing 350 million people? It's not possible. Mm. I think this might be the lowest amount of time I've taught politics with anybody. Because uh, I, I try yeah. to avoid this Same topic. here, honestly. But I told somebody, I don't think everybody should have the right to vote. And I just said, uh, I, I like the way I like that Trump, <laughs> I, I Trump, see where this is going. Trump yeah. likes the way you think. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really like the Greek format of how they used to do it in regards to you had to be well-educated. You had to be in the know in regards to you had to be participating in the political experience throughout the year. Before and you, you got can't to vote. keep it for long. No, no they, you can't. So they rotate people out. And I really like that format. Obviously, not the format where they didn't include women. You can definitely have that nowadays. So yeah. tweaks, but no people from shithole countries, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are you crazy? You draw the line somewhere. I have these Ethiopians come coming out there voting. <laughs> but I, I think an uneducated vote is shouldn't have the same merit as an educated vote. And I, and I agree. I, and I think the, 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 the falsehood of like everyone's vote should matter is like, but does it have the same weight? It, it, it doesn't in terms of the thought put behind it, so why should it and the impact? Do you dig what I'm saying? I, I do. So, yeah, I always thought I, I'd prefer that format because I don't want to give a fuck about politics and people try to guilt me like, Abba, you have a vote. You must vote. No, fuck you. If I don't want to, if I'm uninspired, I'm not going to take time out of my day to do something I don't give a fuck about. So don't pressure me into this. And that's why I just prefer if people that were really well... And, and, and the benefit this. of that... Is that it'd be a lot harder to manipulate, you know, through propaganda the the general public. There'd be less interest in doing so. So, that's interesting. I haven't really read up on like what democracy was like when it started in ancient Greece, but like I would imagine you would still have like the power of opinion because now we have financial power in the hands of a few. Maybe you just kind of have this op- opinion in the hands of very few people that would stay in their families and their families and. I don't know. I think it could be problematic. Mm. It, it would a, only be problematic if there was that nepotism. Like, but if it has nothing to do with family, because right now the U.S. does have royal families. If you think about it, right? Like, there. If you if you talk about the Clintons, the can there's certain families that 
they're just oh hey it's them you know yeah. they're part of this fucking the Schwarzeneggers Schwarzeneggers in the in the in the Kennedy family yeah. have we thought about that like they they are these families that are kind of untouchable and they kind of do whatever they want and they're always whether they're in front of the camera or behind the scenes they're dictating something you know so that's gonna happen whether we like it or not now the question is the do Roth we want Childs. it Sorry. the Rothschilds <laughs> the Rothschilds are, Who said are, that? are that the best mean. example because them they're not even a, them it's international. Yeah. They're in charge internationally, right? But you never fucking see a Rothschild uh, running for an election. No. It doesn't give a fuck. Is he going to fund it? Fuck yeah. Is he going to dictate what's going to come out of that? Fuck yeah. But is he going to put himself in the limelight to get shit on? Never. Not a chance, mm. you know? So there's always these people controlling. But to what you said about having um, being disinterested, that goes back to not having quality candidates. You had educated people, right? If you had educated people doing it, you'd be more like, all right, this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm confident with it. But right now, when you have to choose, like, the Americans have to choose between Hillary and Trump, no matter what you want to say, that is a shit choice. That is a garbage choice. Yeah. Admit it. You know, some people are like, oh, it's not. Hillary's great. She's going to be the first woman. No, forget about first woman. Forget about none. As a fucking quality human being, Yeah, they're both garbage. They were both shit. So what did you expect people to do? Was I surprised that Trump won? Yeah, I was. You know, I didn't think it was going to... Like, it no. seems... Out of I was pretty surprised. I was pretty surprised. You guys were yeah. surprised? Yeah. I was. I was quite certain. It was Jokingly, I thought it would happen, but I think in the back of my mind, I thought, because of, a, like, oh, it'll be a funny scenario. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, there's no way. It's not... Because he yeah. doesn't even want to win it. He started to make it clear towards the end. He's like, yeah, you know, I did this. He, he wanted to renegotiate his contract for a new season of that show. Mm. I don't think he went in there with the intent of winning the fucking presidency. I don't know. I, I, I was pretty confident early on. I, I spent so much time on online stuff and online forums. I just kind of saw the shift over the last two years, especially with the way the left has behaved and all the things that have been happening. I just noticed that people are upset. They're really angry. That is true. And so more than anything, this is a, a fuck you to you know what they consider political correctness, which you know, I think a lot of people feel stifled by. Yeah. So spending time online, I remember reading forum posts and how ung- angry people are. And then seeing Trump come out and saying whatever he wanted, I was like, oof. There, there's some part of them that's just getting fucking hard right now. They're yeah. like they're rock hard by what he's able to say because it speaks to their deepest desires. So I wasn't that surprised. To be honest with you, I'm like, oh, oh. And then when I saw Hillary get nominated, I'm like, she's so detestable. Everybody hates her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know as a black person, I, I just liked her. She did one interview where she went on a black radio show, and they were like, yeah, what do you never leave your house without? And she's like, hot, hot sauce. sauce. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I was like, bitch. <laughs> I hope you die. Like I hope you lose everything. I, oh Open my god! Open right now, Hillary. Yeah, like, guarantee you got no hot sauce <laughs> on you. Yeah, you and, the, and they called her there. out. They called her out on yeah. the radio. They're like, "You just saying that to Panda?" She's like, "Is it working?" And I remember in that moment, is it working? Yeah, she oh, just sh- sh- unshameful about it. So I was like, yeah. in that moment, I'm just like, yeah, I think I kind of understand why people would prefer Trump over this woman. Just in that moment, I wanted to do that to Middle Eastern people. They're like, "What do you never leave your home without? A burqa?" <laughs> Are you pandering? Are you <laughs> you fucking playing games? <laughs> I would have gone with garlic sauce. But I, yeah, yeah, that would I, probably be the so better much, one. You so went so to the extreme. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's trying to pander to Middle Eastern people. <laughs> no, 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 that vote's definitely not. See, Black American culture is influential, and it you is. know it's it's such a huge part of, of American history, yeah. and uh, it's the most copied culture. It's in only history. part of American history for one month a year. Don't make a big deal about it. <laughs> People always have a problem with what Black History Month. I, I have a problem with I have a problem with the fact that it's uh, that they have oh. Black History Month because if you look at what they talk about, it's all American history. Yeah. But mm. for you to say it's Black History, it's one month. You're trying to say that it's something different, right? Mm. Like it's just this thing, but it's not. It's all part right. of American history. It's about the civil rights. It's all sure. about stuff that still affects people today. Yeah. So why do you say it's I one month and it's only about them? But it's, uh, I, so, so, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. It's kind of insinuating that Black people's history started with slavery and started yeah exactly it's when like so the, the reality is you know so that's why i don't that's my problem with it it's just that it's such a weird thing to still do in 2018 right to be like hey oh here's a month you know and talk about your history i tried but to do not, a this bit is about american this when history I started. Mm. <laughs> yeah go on <laughs> it, was, it didn't work well i was trying I'm to not, say I'm not, I'm, my, I'm uh, i would love to hear your opinion it was poorly thought out i was a couple months in this was in korea where it didn't matter hey man listen i ain't never gonna look at someone like yo what the fuck's <laughs> up with that bit bro it just it doesn't jive with my political views motherfucker <laughs> but like my point what my, my point was like uh it feels like a bad game show prize it's like oh like you know all these horrible things that black people had to endure as a as a race in america and beyond and it's just like ah uh, you know what we'll give you a month oh and guess what? The coldest month. Yeah. Everyone knows black people love the cold. Yeah. That was that's. It's not it a bad bit. It's not bad. It's I mean, not bad. There's it some truth bad, to it. But thanks. I didn't think it was that bad. But I was going to just say, um, the the main reason I think the importance of Black History Month is 
even though it is American history, because it is ignored or not taught in American history and general history, they kind of put a month to focus on that element. Now, do I think black people should always be learning about their history? 100%. Wait, but the whole, con- what I'm saying is it's not about black people. It's about the country needs to learn, right? Everybody in the country needs to learn about what happened, why it happened, how it's not going to happen again. But you can't again. make people learn. You can't force anybody to learn. So uh, at least to their own black use, you still want to be able to transmit that history. Yeah. So that's why there's a focus on that. Now, why does it only really start at slavery and not be, be they can't trace back their roots. Africa is a huge country. Uh, my history is only Ethiopian history. I don't know how it's Senegalese lived or how Cameroonian lived. So if you're a slave and you just came to America, you can teach me the African history, but it's huge and expansive and yeah. so diverse. Mine was no mostly way. about just the American. You could start at slavery. You could start, but w- where else would make you start? It, no, no, but make it a general thing as this is part of our history, whether we like it or not. This is what fucking happened. Yeah, know? but Americans don't want to address the fact that's that they've the been problem. bad. That's the problem. That's the fucking problem. Because if, if you don't address it, it's like right now if you get fucking stabbed, okay? You get yeah. stabbed in the chest, which is very likely, give, you know, given who you are. Um, so you get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and you refuse... Sorry, I put my box cutter on the table. You refuse right You refuse to acknowledge that you got stabbed. You're like, no, 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 fuck it. Yeah, there's a bit of pain, but it's cool. You refu- what do you think is going to happen? It's going to fester. You're going to fucking end up dying. Yeah. Address the fucking stab wound. Yeah. Get rid of it. We'll I know it sucks that you got stabbed, but you got to address it. Be- admit that you fucking got stabbed. Yeah. We'll take it out. We'll go to the hospital. But that's what now they just don't want to admit it. They're like, no, well, what are you talking about? Well, it's hard because, you know, if you benefit from those systems, it is in your own best interest to not talk about it. Of course, those of course. You're Whether right. it's consciously or subconsciously, that's why in South Africa they had the Truth and Re- Re- Reconciliation Program, which is basically allowing the people who benefit in the system to come out and say what they and how they were part of it and how they benefited without any repercussions. That's and fun. that allowed the country to address the problems that they had faced and how to heal. And so I think South Africa's model is beautiful. I, I really like it because, I mean, I don't have any resentment for white people in my heart. You know, I don't really think I like, I want to pitchfork and burn some people down. But I do think there is a, a lack of acknowledgement of some of the systems that are in place. And you want to talk about something fucked up. If we did do something like that, if we did have legitimate black history and, and it was taught, I think there'd be a lot of anger that would be built from that experience because then people would realize just how terrible some of the things that happened were. Because if you look into it, it's really dark and gruesome. Oh, yeah. yeah and there's yeah. photographic evidence of a lot of this terrible stuff. And so people are even talking about like reparations and stuff like that. You yeah. want to hear something, something really crazy? Haiti, after it got its independence, had to pay back reparations to France because France lost its slaves. I don't know about that. That's fucked. Isn't that crazy? That so does make me angry. Th- that that yeah, is angry. They only paid it back in 1940. And this amounts to billions of dollars. So for a nation starting out, you're already starting off with... But you... So you got your freedom, and they're like, okay, well, if you want your freedom since we lost our property, i.e. you guys, you're going to have to pay us How money. are we going to build all this shit now? Exactly. So... I think talking about history and acknowledging it and then trying the reconciliation route, I think it's just too difficult for people. It's a conversation they don't want to have to have. But we're gonna are we gonna just continue this route where everything's fucking swept under the rug and these people don't ad- like you go to certain places in the States especially Dude, you feel like you're in a different world. <laughs> you're like, wait, this still happens? You mm. people still think like this? Yeah. Why? Because nobody really wants to address it for years, they've just been pushing it aside. You're like, I oh, don't know, that's a that's a Bible belt situation, or that's a this, yeah. and they just push it. We we gotta start addressing it. It's like as comics, right? Most people, the stuff that we talk about, the shit that we joke about, they don't want to joke about it. They don't, oh, no, we can't at the workplace. We do. We're like, you know what? Fuck it. It's happening. I can make a joke out of this. I'm going to address it. This is reality. You know? Mm. People have to be, I'm not saying make jokes, make light of everything, but people have to be more open about discussing our short, as human beings, dude, we've all fucked up. We've all fucked up throughout history. It doesn't matter who you are, and we're going to continue to fuck up. But fuck, man, if we're just going to sweep it under the rug and not address it, yeah. we're purposely making it happen again. Yeah. We're yeah. not helping the situation. Yeah. Yeah, those who what was what's the what's the quote? Those who don't learn from, from history, history are history. doomed to repeat it. it and it's a hundred percent that. That's why things like this always freak me out. That's why I get pissed off when I when I was in high school. It never occurred to me. It's as I got older, the whole Black History Month. I was thinking about. It, I was like, but what we in university when we were doing uh, American history, I was like, all this stuff is just American history, yeah. isn't it? By calling it Black History, you segregate it. It's not even the month that bothers me. It's the fact you're saying this is Black History. Like this yeah. is it. Yeah. You know, enjoy. But this is the way America is now is based on most of the shit that you're going to learn about in that. So it's American history. Why are you saying it's different? Mm, Yeah, I I think your anger or or your displeasure should... Let's be focused on the idea of the black history and the fact that American history in general ignores black history. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's the real issue. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if it was taught, there would be no reason for for black people to seek out, like, hey, what happened here? What was the real cause of this? Because it is important to know that. Because if you look at your environment, you don't understand why things are the way they are. Then you might look for answers. And in that search, you'd be like, all right, I need to transmit this to my people because they may need this in order to survive. Because understanding 
um, you know, racial inequities and stuff like that, for me, is not a tool that I want to use to be able to show off to people. It's just a, 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 a better understanding of why things are happening the way they are around me and what are the subtleties that contribute to the reality that I live in. So when I'm, let's say, in America, and then I'll look at why all the black people are living on the south side of New Orleans instead of the north side, then you're going to find out, oh, they had segregation laws. In Baltimore, they didn't allow black people to buy certain properties on the east side of town until 1964. So I'm like, oh, okay. So it makes me understand why we're, we're moving this way and why we're doing things. And that's the importance of Black History Month in that regard, just for people to, okay, make sense of the world around them, if anything. Yeah. If you look at Native Reserves, I mean, if we never had history, you would never understand Native Reserves. That's another fucked right. up thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I just come to this country and I see a Native, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Well, that's how I didn't, I didn't learn about that shit in school, by the way. I didn't know. So when I, when I was, uh, you know, I guess late high school, stuff like that, when I started to first understand about, the first time I ever heard about reserves was people who were going to buy fireworks. Yeah. And like we're going to reserve, and I didn't understand. I thought reserve was like a like a warehouse or something, mm-hmm. right? I remember because I was like, "Are you going to?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember hearing about kind of walking this and that, and it was hard for me to comprehend. You know what I mean? And then when I finally started to learn about, it, I was like, "Get the fuck out of! We do this, <laughs> like we have fucking people. <laughs> like this is crazy." It is a like, warehouse where we store people. Yeah, that are, and it's like, you know we don't want to round us. Uh, well, that's we how it started essentially. You know. Crazy. Uh, it's yeah. so crazy. That's but infuriating too. I'm getting very angry right but, but now. It's, Sorry. But history but is dark. Yeah, history is, is dark. not is not the lightest thing. Yeah. And it's not to say we haven't made progress because we definitely have, but there's sure. some things that we have not that's why Judas and Trudeau had to apologize to the you know the natives here in Canada because of the simple fact that yo, listen, when you look at what they did in those schools to those kids. Oh, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, we didn't learn about residential schools when I was no, I had to learn at all. As no. an adult, I yeah. had to learn about that on my own. Mm. Yeah. That, but that's another thing I'm telling you is this whole let's sweep it on the road. How is that fucking helping? How is yeah. that helping? It's helping the people who want to maintain a certain sense of power. Yes. That's all, that's all it comes down to. Like I said, the South African model is the only one I've ever seen work in terms of healing a population and helping move on. Because apartheid in South Africa was bananas. It was a crazy experience for them. So to see them come up with the solution as Nelson Mandela, why he's regarded as such a, a big figure, is because of the Truth and Reconciliation Program. So, I, I mean, I, I find it super fascinating. And, I, and I, know, I know for people, the main reason that they'll lie is because it's beneficial. Yeah. You know, the reason why we lie to each other is because we want to preserve ourselves or, or, you know, protect other people from the truth, but really it's just to preserve ourselves. So if there's no consequences, if you lay down the table and say, listen, you can say these things and I will not come for your head, I will not come at you, there will be no repercussions, then people are much more likely to tell the truth. So, so yeah. It is fucked though. It is fucked yeah. that, uh, especially us, like in our business, like, you know, we try to make people laugh, we have a good time. Mm. And then when you th- you actually sit back and think of people in general, how we are and the shit we've done, it's so, f- it's, we're like it's aliens. sometimes hard to laugh. You yeah. know, you have to, you, dust has to settle a bit before you can, you know, make light of a, it, I don't think you're not always necessarily making light of a situation. It's a way to deal with it, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 You know, like just now when I was like, oh, it is a warehouse where you put people. I, was, I guess I was kind of, Joking about it, but, but it, like, but it is. But if you look at it, kind of, there the is truth, a truth. The truth is just fucking storing people, human beings, you yeah. know. And then, th- you know what always gets to me is when you fuck with people, and then you get surprised when they're mad. Mm. So it always is like, oh, what are they complaining about? Well, are you fucking joking right now? I mean, what it, just put yourself? What if I would story be like, this is you, this is where you live, this is this is the fence, and, and it's not a good area either. No, like the, the, the water is terrible. Yeah. It's like. Some yeah. people might call it a shithole. You know what would be a great project? To just take some, some random people from the city and make them live there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just have a camera crews follow them. Like, how do you like it? Exactly. It's, infuri- it's like an yeah. episode of Sh- Survivor, but in a community that shouldn't be Survivor. Two and miles like, away from your house. That's yeah. so fucked up yeah. to me. So yeah. it, it, it's something that I, I think the ports of humor and, and comedy in this day and age is more than anything is we talk about serious topics, there's tension. There's tension. After we yeah. like the anger that we kind of feel, like that bubbling feeling, what jokes do is they just cut that tension. They allow to make mm-hmm. subjects that are difficult more palatable. You know, like, oh, I can mm-hmm. I can digest this. So as comedians, I'm, I don't say we have the obligation because I think everybody should do whatever the yeah, fuck I, they do. I don't, yeah, I don't like the follow model. I, I don't like even people Be who funny say, like, is your obligation. Yeah, yeah that's your only obligation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I think the only thing that I would say is like, you have a power. And if you want to use that, I encourage it. That's all it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't like the idea. I don't like the following mentality. You know, you, I, I think you think about this the, the way, the same way I do. I don't like people thinking like, oh, because I have a microphone, you should follow me. No. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. I'm speaking a hundred percent for me, mm-hmm. for me. If you agree with me, if Was agrees with me, if you agree, perfect. Then the three of us, we have that in common. 
But you're not mm-hmm. going to be like, whatever he says, because I agree with that one thing, I'm going to agree with everything else he says. This no. is amazing. Agreed. This God figure thing, a lot. they yeah. did it with Oprah. They did it yeah. with Oprah last week. Mm-hmm. Oprah had a speech. A lot of people liked it. And right away, they're like, president, we got to follow everything she says. Well, that's fine. Stop doing that. You keep doing that. You keep glorifying. She is a fantastic lady. But she's a fantastic lady. <laughs> doesn't necessarily <laughs> no, mean. She, she's done a lot of, dude, yeah. She I, I talked about on the show about how she, if you look at her story. That's a feel good fucking story. Yeah. Everybody said you're not gonna do shit. You're Started a woman. You're from black. The bottom, you're, now she's there. hundred yeah. percent. And she literally did this to everybody. Became yeah. one of the richest people on the fucking planet yeah. mm-hmm. when they actively told her, "No, we're not gonna let you do this." And she still. So that's an amazing story. But this whole fucking sure uh, that you're automatically like fit to be yeah you know, some kind of leader. We all because follow. You, and also this whole not nonsense of oh I can't believe this happened. It shouldn't have had. Look, if she was honest and she'd be like, like "We knew this was happening. I fucking knew the. I was friends with these fucking people." I'm very sorry that I didn't speak out. It was just the way things were. It was a fucked up time moving forward. Okay, at least you're honest about it. But about this whole, I had nothing to do. I didn't know about any of this. This is a surprise to me. Let's make sure. Has, it never she, said, has she said that? She said, for example, this happened. That she's all about the Me Too and she uh, about the um not the Me not the Me Too. She didn't say that. She she's basically saying how we need to speak out never again. It's never gonna happen again. We need to speak out about it. And I can't believe she's shocked that this happened. Hmm. But how are you shocked this happened? I, I'm not in Hollywood. I fucking knew about casting couch. I knew all about this shit. Mm. We all knew about this. People in there knew about it. Some people, some women had come out and but said... But did you know the gravity? Oh, I was surprised about the gravity. Yeah, so I think maybe that's her surprise. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a We Oprah all assumed, fan. I think, right? Yeah. And, and I can't criticize her for not necessarily speaking out, not doing anything, because, I mean, nobody else did. And when you think about that, how huge that industry is... No, but that's what I'm saying. Now that everybody's coming out, yeah. what makes her special? Because she had a speech? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Her speech was really nice. But that's it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's really what it was. We've been, her we've, speech was great. <laughs> we've, been, we, we've been in this mess before, and now if we're going to say because her speech was great, that's exactly what a lot of people do with Trump. He says it the way I yeah. fucking think it. Yeah. We have to stop fucking doing this. Yeah. We have to stop right away jumping on these Emotional bandwagons. bandwagons. I agree. Oh, I, I, yeah. I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm not saying she's fit, but I mean... But I do, I do... It's not like she's the one like who's her. trying to run for president. You know, it's just she said a speech, and other people yeah. say you should run. So I can't fault her for that. I, I mean, yeah, I yeah, like, like, yeah, like I said, I actually, li- as a person, despite that, I like her. I like her story, too, yeah. and I like her. I'm just saying this whole right away, all right, I'm, I'm God, vote for me. And everybody's like, she's the best lover, next president, fucking maker, emperor But she, she empress didn't necessarily say that. She didn't necessarily say God. She never said president. No, she, she never said even God, like, even the idea of what, she just said a speech that she thought was inspiring to people. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's really important to make that distinction because I think sometimes when people are in the public eye, the public will run with an idea. But that's what they did. And then the person will get criticized for the idea of the public. For example, he had his article written he doesn't go around talking about it. Everyone else does. But because other people talk about it, people are like, well, you're big-headed now. So it's an unfair consequence that someone who gets some recognition has to face for things that they never said or did. You're 100% right because you know what CNN wrote to try to, I guess, diffuse so that they don't get in trouble the next day? They said, Oprah Winfrey possibly actively thinking of being pre- Dude, That's I'm actively not thinking, based on what? Right? I'm actively thinking of yeah. riding a pterodactyl. Oh. It's not going to fucking happen. Do you know? <laughs> it's such yeah. a crazy thing to say, actively thinking. Why are you putting people's thoughts? I'm actively... Maybe she's also actively thinking of fucking Bruce Willis. What, like, does it matter? Like, why are you telling us this? Yeah. It's not a... And, and, and that's super important because I know for me, sometimes things get said on my behalf. You know, an, an incident will happen. People are like, oh, Abba and Preacher are going to talk about this. You know they're going to do this and that. And then all the people like, are talking or discussing this. We've never even thought about the topic. So all of a sudden, I got people inboxing me like, why do I feel this way about this? I'm like, bitch, when did I say anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just important, I think, for people to always vet what they're, what, they're, what they're discussing. Did this person actually say this? It's kind of like that Keaton Jones shit, right? I don't care about the bullying video. What is that? Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's yeah. a little I white forgot, kid. I he, forgot who he was. Yeah, it's a little I white kid who got bullied. It's a little that. white kid who got bullied, and his mom took a video. And, uh, so, you know, they're both Southerners. And yeah. basically, the, you know, the guy was crying on camera. He said, you know, stay strong. And, you know, if you get bullied, try to, because it's, it's tough. So everyone had an outpouring of support for Keaton Jones. Right away. Okay. And then a picture came out of the mom hanging with a Confederate flag. Apparently, she did it ironically, mm. but whatever. So then they came at the mom and said she was racist. And then a little other story came out that the kid was, uh, Keaton Jones was saying the, the N-word at school, and that's why he to was getting bu- bullied. To a bunch of kids. But to his, to his defense, a lot of those kids were bringing down the property value of the neighborhood <laughs> he lived in, and he just wasn't standing for it. He's just a real estate enthusiast. What, are you going to really? not call him the N-word? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. This guy is the most business PC savvy. culture, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> and <then laughs> can't even use the N-word anymore. <laughs> what is this fucking you North should Korea? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they probably use it over there. No, no, I don't I doubt it. They have different uh, slurs. Uh, so I don't want to fucking completely change the subject. Oh, go before you do, I just want to say one thing. No, go ahead. Uh, before we forget, because about the Oprah thing, I'm with you on that. I'm not mad. At, what I'm mad about is the people automatically shifting. This is our new God figure, and then next month, this is our new God figure. Motherfuckers, think for yourself. Yeah. Think for yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah, everybody wants to ch- somebody else to change shit. Change shit around you. You're yeah. mad about fucking people raping people, which I agree you should be. Don't fucking rape people. If you have a friend who's questionably fucking... Ch- address that. You start doing it in small scales, right? It's just like uh, back in the day when people used to throw the trash everywhere, but then they put the trash cans out and people give you a dirty look when you throw your trash on the floor. Yeah. Like, why don't you fucking hold it? Walk down the block and put it in. And then automatically, I know in this city, people just start to do it. Like, you, they're always second, like, oh, where's the trash? They don't just th- fucking throw it on the floor. That's what you do. Keep your friends in check. If I had a friend who was very rapey, <laughs> I'd be like, bro, what the fuck are you... You know what I mean? Like, you address it. I wouldn't be like, well, I hope I could elect somebody that'll take care of this cocksucker. Rapey is such a funny word. It, 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 it I, is funny, I, We yeah. both snickered. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's just the word rapey. It, it has, is. like, a cute connotation to the word rape. And you can't do that with, like... Yeah, it's, he's, like this guy's very thievy. <laughs> or, 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 or he's very murdery. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's <laughs> not... kind of funny, actually. You know what I mean? Exactly. Murdery, but it shouldn't be because... So he's a great guy, but he's fucking murdery. Just watch out. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's such a weird way to like just take the edge people. off the word. You, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you had yeah. a fucking if if we knew that was for example, he's a little creepy and do you wouldn't fucking address it. You'd be like, "Bro, let me ask you a question." Hmm. Three people you've brought home, all three said that you try to rape them. <laughs> what the fuck is up with that? You would address it. You wouldn't just be like, "I hope somebody gets elected to handle this." Yeah. But people are like that. Oh, I hope they fucking. I, I hope I find a new god figure to believe in. Fucking address it on a small scale and change the things around you. Try to make things better around you. Don't wait for other people to make things better. So we'll see yeah. why why have three girls come out we, and said uh, they're all lying. <laughs> That's not to true. be fair. They were wearing very short skirts. Yeah, they, <laughs> and, uh, I'm, that was a joke. I'm so yeah, sorry. he's like <laughs> I'm gonna get he's gonna pitchfork be on, mob when I go gonna outside. Be on breakfast television. A go- <laughs> Gazette poster boy <laughs> says you know that so they were fun? asking for it. Condones. Or, we say no, this, but no. there's people that do that. There's a lot of hit jobs that happen online now. They just take the, they out take of little snippets, even though there's yeah. clearly just before it says this is clearly a joke. They'll take those little snippets. Like, oh, this guy's a pedophile. I'd like to formally oh, me, say with, that, that was that was a joke. With the stuff I've said this episode about yeah. the shithole country and stuff, they're just gonna take all the out of context bits yeah. and be like, "Look at this Trump supporter." <laughs> Trump, he has a point, and then yeah. it's just like, "Well, it's done." They did I that to me on CTV. That, I showed oh, you that yeah. picture. What, dude? You remember when the movie The Interview came out? Yeah. Uh, Seth Rogen and uh, James <laughs> Franco. I thought it was when, garbage when they yeah. went to uh, North Korea. Yeah. You, you saw that shit? No. North apparently they thought North Korea hacked Sony and they mm-hmm. threatened don't release the movie so they took it off the theaters whatever. I, I went to uh, Goo's over here to watch another movie because they weren't showing that and I had taken a cookie right before an edible and I was uh, high out of my mind and uh, they decided to interview me. They're like, oh Pantel, this dude, what what do you think about them caving? And now I'm like, oh, it was started to kick in, right? I was like, this is a bad idea, but I gotta talk through this, right? So I said, I don't agree with them folding and being like, we're gonna pull this out. Like, why do you fold for these fucking countries? Like, some country says, I'm gonna bomb you if you play a movie and you guys fold. I go, I think that's a weak move. I think Sony should have released it. I think the American public should have fucking backed Sony releasing it. It's a fucking movie. Well, so I said this whole thing, right? How's against that? Bro, fucking first page online. I started getting text messages the next day, like, dude, what the fuck did you tell CTV News? I was like, I forgot. I was like, I don't know. What are you talking about? I look at it, I saw the photo. All it says is uh, a lot of people support North Korea uh, or, or uh, North Korean leader, and it has my fucking face like this. <laughs> and I was like, yo, that's out of context. I don't fucking support this guy. But you want them to watch for who else supports him, but it looks like I fucking support him because you just took my photo, and the headline reads, some people support North Korea. I'm not one of those fucking people. So they did that shit to me once. No. God damn. Yeah. Fucking CTV. Uh, fucking CTV Montreal, yeah. I had a news story. That I ended up paying like my mom's mortgage or some shit, and so it went a little bit viral. It was popular. You and did? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was Fuck a long it. Dude, I love that. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. And uh, so the news guy came by my place and he's like, I want to interview you. So I was like, cool. So we're talking. And he's like, how much did you give her? I'm like, I don't want to give her a monetary amount. I was about amount. to say, yeah, that's none of your business. It's none of your business, right? I mean, I don't want to give her a monetary amount. And at the same time, I'm like, it's not necessarily about how much I gave her, just the look on her face, how happy she was, and just being able to alleviate that stress. And he kept pushing, pushing, like, how much are the houses around here worth? And I'm like, I'm not telling you. It's like, it's not important. So it's like, okay, it's okay. I'm not going to... I told him, I'd prefer if you didn't insert it the next day. It's like, young man uh, gives mom 75K. I was like, nigga, where the fuck did this number come from? I literally told you the opposite, and you said you wouldn't, and you still published it. So I left a comment, and I got upvoted, and then the editor came in and then slashed the edit. But like... I'm like, you're such a piece of shit. Yeah, you're yeah. a shitty human being. You looked me dead in the eyes. I was generous enough to give you mm-hmm. the time of my day to help you with your story because I wanted to you know, help you in that regard. And you still lied to my face. So when sometimes Trump talks about like media 
fucking around. Malpractices? I understand. I, yeah. I know them firsthand. So that's why I'm like, uh, I can't get mad at him. Like, obviously, he exaggerates, but yeah. Yeah, that. that's his yeah. thing. But it would have been funny if I was in his shoes mm. and they're like, no, you have to put a number. I would have fucking made it ridiculous. I would have been like, <laughs> local comic gives a quarter of a million dollars <laughs> to each of his parents. <laughs> Yo, that shit was crazy. I had a billionaire message me. He's like, hey, son, if you need anything. I was like, nigga. I'm on like I'm like two buttons away from asking you for like a few hundred thousand dollars. What a billionaire! <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, you what? fucking asked. Yeah, bro. and I, I I couldn't. I think principle wise, I couldn't yeah. ask this guy for anything. I felt <laughs> uncomfortable. Like it just it made okay. me uneasy. How about this? How about this? You fund my next Netflix special. <laughs> <laughs> Damn your principles! It's gonna cost twelve million dollars. He's executive producing this shit. That's yeah. it. Yeah, like this guy was so rich, he was on a plane. While texting you? Like, no, no. Like I, I remember I called the number that I got an email from. It was his secretary. He's like, yeah, I'll patch you through this airplane. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, who's that's, got, yeah, that's when you know you got mad money. And I looked this guy up. Son. Yeah, yeah. So that That's was, fucking hilarious. Was, nice like, guy, though, to just come out. I, he I, just liked the story. He liked the story. It made him feel good. And he, he's an immigrant as well. So he was just like, I, I'd like to help you. And I was like, I can't accept anything. There's certain people like that when they get money. Like, yeah. uh, the, I know if my mom had ever gotten money, her dream when she was little. You remember those infomercials I used to play? Like Ethiopia or whatever this yeah. and that. Mm. Her biggest thing was adoption. Her biggest thing was, uh, you know, people are always obsessed with, you know, having kids. And then when they can have kids, they freak out. They want to do surrogacy, this and that. Her biggest thing was always like, why? Look at all these kids that all they're missing is. Li-. And I know for a fact this woman, if she'd win the lottery or whatever, I wouldn't see any of this fucking money because it would end up all over the world for her to try to. But you know what? Good for her. That's what she. Wants but to, I, mm-hmm. you know, but there's certain people like that. Like there's, you know, I'm thinking if I get money business wise, like what would I do? Would I build this? Would I do that? Her, it's like, oh, but look at all these, look at all these kids. Yeah. They're kids. They, it, mm-hmm. It's people's mindsets. I wish I was more like that. I do too. I wonder how much of that money. I'm so, I'm just way too skeptical and way too much of a sometimes conspiracy theorist. Uh, like the Ethiopian I wonder videos? how much money, like mm. those charities. Oh, they rip, they rip you off. Have you ever worked for a charity? I have not. Have you? No. no. I worked for a company called Zentel. We did uh, representation on behalf of charities. And uh, administrative fees, they never let us tell anybody, but it was over 75%. Yo, fuck that. That's what I... That, that is a fact. I've heard that, right? Yeah, but that's I never a fact. Know. Yeah, that's so, Red, what's the what's the United um, Way? United Way is that the one that's here that's really popular? In I don't know. I know UNICEF. When I was young, they used yeah, to make me the uh, on Halloween yeah, do yeah. the boxes. The biggest charity now here in Canada is United Way, and uh, yeah, they take like sixty to seventy five percent. When your CEO is making like three four million, now, there's something wrong. Yeah, with it's enraging. I don't want to get like even if whatever ten percent is going to help the the hungry, the homeless, what mm-hmm. have you. I don't want to line some. I don't want to. Line maybe my pockets. twenty bucks goes to get this guy. You know, is going to his yacht payment or whatever. Like, uh, yeah, it's a weird thing. When shit like this comes out, that's how I know that I'm fucking super misinformed. Like shit like this enrages me because when I was young, I used to always think the same. Oh, you know, you're getting and it's helping. And then when I hear this shit, I'm like, fuck, man. Not only do I not know anything, mm. right? You you start to feel helpless because you're like, fuck, man. I want to help, you know. Mm. But mother, the, the channels that they've aligned to make it possible for me to help. They're all corrupt. I'm They're not all taking a piece. Yeah. They're all taking a fucking piece. And then yeah. you think about it. Why? I, I used to think when you get involved in charity, number one, either you're uh, you're not getting paid for it. I, I, I always thought that charity was volunteer work. I always thought that because I'm, I'm fucking stupid. I'm sure there's tons of volunteers, but there's so many. No, not at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. But at I the always bottom, thought that yeah. people organize, like, like, no, I take time. It's kind of like uh, if you had a community center and you volunteered to be the president or whatever. Oh, fuck no. I thought it's like unpaid shit, but it's not. It's like no, a it's fucking tax career. Free for it's a lot tax- of these <sighs> for a lot of these billionaires, you know? I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. What if their argument for why they do the things they do is that they're way more effective, therefore they can gather way more money? And even if it's just that 25%, that 25% is way more. Than, than what that, they would have done without that one hundred percent that they would have been giving if they had none of the staff that they were paying and all that. Because to be fair, if you have a salary, mm-hmm. you're doing this full time. Therefore, you can collect way more funds. Yeah, and, and so if you have a skill, I understand. But let, yeah. let's talk. That's about, the argument. You're let's right. talk about yeah. threshold. I don't know enough. Uh, you changed my mind. Actually, no, no, it's but he, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I don't know. I no, don't but, know enough. That could but, be very well true. Uh-huh. But Wass, what about this? Like, I, I totally agree with you. You have a skill. You want to use it. You're gonna get paid for it. But aren't there kind of just ethical limits to? If you're raising money, right, for the poor and you're building schools, this and that, right, and uh, your figure, you, you, instead of you taking a million, you, you tell me you can't fucking take a salary of 500000 a year and give that five hundred five hundred thousand dollars in Africa? But that's in arbitrary. A village, you know what kind of, it is, it is arbitrary, but you know what kind of, because they're just random numbers I'm fucking throwing out there. Yeah. I don't know how much they fucking 100000 may be too much. There might be there's some guy working at McDonald's like, you should make what I should make. Yeah, it's You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you're it's right, like, you're right. It's hard to determine what number. I'm not saying I agree with it. I personally... Charity calls me, I laugh in their face and I hang up. I would never give money because I think that shit's nonsense. I agree. But the argument for why they do it the way they do it, I do kind of get. Because I know, I, I don't got time. I want to help. I don't got time to work for free. You know Let me ask a question. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you went to Ethiopia? Six, seven years ago. Ha, do you Have you seen places that they either told you, oh, we got better because of fucking people who called in from the States to, 
to send in money or have no but in a country of like 70 million people it's very likely mm-hmm. that i may not meet the people who are benefiting from it so right. i don't want to discount it I, obviously knowing what i've known working with charities i'm not surprised these kids get so little money you know what i'm saying anytime foreign money comes out you think a child's gonna get it who's gonna get it to that child you know what i'm saying who's gonna get it to that yeah. orphan Who's a person? Some Ethiopian lady who's making less than a dollar a day. You think she's going to give a dollar a day to little fucking Timothy? Come on now. You know what I'm Wait, saying? There's Ethiopian kids named Timothy? Yeah, you never know. You know what I'm saying? There's a K-Bron, there's a, okay, no, <laughs> Timothy's not. I didn't want to get too Ethiopian on you niggas. So I, I use a name y'all knew. Uh, <laughs> oh, I got an Ethiopian name, Adunga. That's not Ethiopian. That is. Uh-huh, it is. I met an Ethiopian with that name. Yeah, I it must have been half because I, I know he's giving names. I never heard of. I'm Dunga thinking I'm gonna trust Ava on this one. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> this man lying. said a Dunga. This is a little too serious. <laughs> you, you know, you know, be funny. <laughs> he was just fucking with me. It means something else. Yeah, it probably yeah. does. It might be like, I hope he says this to an Ethiopian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a Semitic language. In Ethiopia, we have Semitic languages. So it yeah. sounds way more like Persian than anything else. A Dunga? Yeah. No, no, a Dunga doesn't. But I think no. our oh, names yeah, yeah. Are, are very are very close to Arabic, and so uh, that's why a name like a Dunga is not uh, something I believe. That's what he told me. Yeah. We have a lot of biblical names. <laughs> yeah, that I know. Yeah, a lot of biblical names because it's a super religious country. So even Jewish names and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that, There's a lot uh, of Ethiopian Jews. Uh, are there not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lar- I think one of the largest populations of, of Jewish people. Well, black Jews, all of them come from Ethiopia pretty mm-hmm. much. They're all from there. It, correct me if I'm mistaken. Ethiopia is the, is one of the, o- is the only African country that was never colonized officially no. by any European power. Yeah, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. That's like the one piece of history yeah. everybody knows. That and our oh. food. Oh, I was <laughs> so bad for not, a not, second. No, <laughs> no. Oh, no. I'm mad at you. It's good He's that like, you know. Look at me. I'm so woke, bro. And he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is yeah. accurate. It is accurate. But uh, yeah, there's like one, even Ethiopians. You know, like when your country's proud of one thing, they, they tell everybody about that. We would never colonize. You know, look mm. at us to like denounce. It. But yeah, that's the one piece of history that most people know about Ethiopia because they're proud of, proud of it. And that's Haile something. Selassie, right? Yes, that's another big one for Jamaicans, especially. They really, they really right. Think, uh, and so. I think part of the reason that they kind of idolize him, in a sense, and well, think he's the, you know, the, the the second coming of Christ, essentially, is perhaps that fact, right? Whoa, that, who's this? I'm curious now. Haile Selassie. You don't know so he's pretty Haile much Selassie? a religious fi- figure in, in Jamaica, but you can let him know. Yeah. So Haile Selassie, the, the Rastafarian religion is essentially almost a Christian sect, you could say. Interesting. It's based on the Bible. It's based on a reinterpretation of the Bible in which. They interpret the Hebrews in the Bible to be the black race, essentially. And uh, they believe that, G- you know, Jesus will co- has come back. And Jesus was in the flesh, Haile Selassie, who was the f- Haile Selassie I, who was the emperor, the emperor of Ethiopia mm. in the early 19th What did he do? I'm curious. Do, do you know about the first day he arrived in Jamaica? About the what, sorry? The first day he arrived in Jamaica, well, how, why they revered him as a prophet after that moment. Because of the hands? No, not even he that. Had the, yeah, I heard the, that story. The, the stick model. So Jamaica, I think, was going through a drought for like years. And so it started they, raining when he got there? Yeah. The day this he motherfucker. Right. Yeah. We call that timing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe he picked the right date. You Yo, know, maybe at the weather cool. network. Yeah. What else did he do? This is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had a huge yeah. impact, and now there's a huge population of Rastafarians in Ethiopia. It's like one of the few communities where like, they have their own land and everything, so it's like a big deal. But, uh, but yeah, he's a big part of that culture. What about stigmata? St- uh, well, I this is just I said that a- anecdotal story because I'm I Go love reggae it. music and I grew up on it and yeah. uh, was obsessed with that that history. But in one, this could be a- again anecdotal. Rita Marley, who was Bob Marley's first wife, uh, said that when he came off the plane, she was there, and then he he waved his hands, his both hands, and he had these two uh, holes. Yeah, well, prints, you know, kind of scars in the middle of his hand. Holy shit! Yeah. And when I saw the prince there in the middle of his hand, I knew him was God. Him, you know? wa- him was God. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so quiet. I'm uh, uncomfortable now. Well, no, no, don't be. Don't be. I was just, her. I closed my eyes. Yeah. I was like, who's speaking? Um, <laughs> it is interesting because uh, when you said stigmata, I thought there was like a case where uh, it was like the movie, right? Where his hands just started to fucking bleed and he was like, Wah! he was possessed and shit. I was like, yo, that's a cool ass story. But it wasn't as cool. It was much tamer than what I expected. No, but he, he had a lot of stances in terms of like African independence. And and, and, yeah. and and anybody who spoke like that and who was kind of about it really did a lot of good for African countries. So they had really strong opinions about them. So Haile Selassie is a popular figure. Uh, and yeah, he's Ethiopian. And a fun fact, the, the song War by Bob Marley uh, is, is, is a literal verbatim speech from Haile Selassie. Oh, word. Yeah, s- spoken, you know, sang kind of by Bob Marley. This is, why, this is why I let this nigga speak on the show. I'm like, yo, I can tell he, he knows his reggae <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, so I was like, yo, I go for it. <laughs> love reggae. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at it. That's awesome. I love it. 
That's all I really listen to. I still only really... I wish I was more broad in my musical tastes yeah. and, and, and just pop culture in general. But no. I just became so obsessed with reggae music from a young age for whatever reason. That's awesome. Still all I listen I to. Feel like I, can't, um, <clears throat> I feel like I can't get in with anything new. That's the problem. Is like I always want to like yeah. the new stuff that everybody's into. But I, I grew up on uh, two things, heavy metal and gangster rap. <sighs> mm. But I only like stuff from that era there's very little stuff from either genre that's gonna resonate with me now that's the problem I don't like that because everybody's talking about new shit and I can't get into it yeah. but I can't take them seriously like if you look at rap I can't take like fucking uh, Hitachi 6 9 or whatever the fuck these new kids are that are coming out that they're talking about the like, AIDS squad and stuff like that like I can't take them seriously I don't think that's is that a real? Thing. Growing there's up, no like, AIDS well, squad is definitely not a thing yeah, I just wanna make a note for anybody out there <laughs> who has AIDS and who's listening to this podcast and is like, yo, there's people out there like me, and they're proud. No. <laughs> Go back to the shadows with your AIDS. This is terrible, but Go I Go back just, to your shithole AIDS I, I, country. I, and <laughs> I just yeah. want to let you know, because if you have AIDS, you might get your hopes up, and Pantel is going to fuck you over. There's yeah. no AIDS squad. People this guy said right AIDS now. squad. <laughs> there is, Didn't though. even start at chlamydia squad. He's still nodding along. Yeah, there's no, there, he didn't even start at chlamydia squad. He went right to fucking nuclear. Yeah. <laughs> there is though, but uh, <laughs> or AIDS, AIDS yeah. or AIDS unit. I don't know whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> it's gotta be unit. <laughs> the point is, the point is, he's fucking. Gay. I can't take them seriously. They don't because I don't know. It's just weird. Like it, it, the you, mumble rap. Are you talking about the mumble rap? Mumble rap too. Same thing. Like if if you listen to Tupac, you listen to like and the, the stuff that they were saying, the stuff they were talking about it was stories. It was actual. Like you'd feel like, oh fuck. Oh, I'm, no, there's I'm, plenty of rappers today that are into that shit. Plenty of rappers. Uh, name a couple. Ah, uh, you can look at Kendrick. You can look I at like J Kendrick. Cole. I like you Kendrick. know what I'm saying. You can look at J. Cole. I like Cole. J Cole. I like Kendrick Lamar, but those are handpicked. The majority of yeah, what you, you got to handpick your music. It should be peculiar and very like you know specified to you. So that's why when Wasim says, you know, I, I I don't know, I wish I had more broad taste. I'm like, no, fuck that. If you like very fuck specific your broad taste, taste. I, I like it when people have peculiar musical taste because I mean, better to have a, a deep understanding of like one genre of music than to try to like cookie cutter into everything else. It's best to. Like what you like and just be happy with that. So I know for me, I don't. My tastes aren't that broad. I'm pretty mm. peculiar as well. What do you like? I, I like a lot of old school funk. Uh, a lot. I like a lot of soul. Um, I like a lot of hip hop and then salsa music. It's pretty much oh, as nice. far as my shit goes. You into Afrobeat at all? Yes. Like Fela Kuti and. Uh, yeah, yeah. I fuck with that shit. Yeah. Nice. I definitely I fuck love with Afrobeat as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what Afrobeat is. It's a it's a kind of mic. It's a jazzy, funky style with African influences. Uh, started in Africa. F I mean, I don't know who's the f originator per se. I'm I'm really mm -hmm. delving into like Sounds African territory. music's been yeah. around for like decades, centuries. So sure. So the uh, influences of that kind of genre are just probably everywhere. So to say who yeah. started it, impossible. Right. Even hip hop, you can trace it back to Africa and find roots in it. So mm -hmm. really, oh for fuck yeah, there's nothing about it that's super original. Just like the combination of Latin, but even the Latin, you know, drums and all that stuff. All those ideas came from Africa. That's not something that the natives had with them. This right. is just a mix of different cultures coming together and then breeding something that seems new, but it's just really influenced by different things. The melting mm. pot, yeah. if you yeah. will. Yeah. Cultural appropriation. Yeah. So was, uh, It kills me when Latinos are like, I don't fuck with black people. I'm like, you realize... How much <laughs> you fuck with black people a lot. Yeah, like Cubans especially sometimes get a little antsy when you're really dark. I'm like, nigga, calm down. Like, you, you're just like the rest of us. It's not that different, you know, so... Uh, a lot of it can be traced back way, way back. But, you know, mm -hmm. reggae and stuff like that, I fuck with all that stuff. Oh, that's great. Uh, talking about the origins of hip-hop, like a lot of that kind of, they call it chatting in uh, in Jamaica in the 70s, uh, which is kind of like rap. Like there would just be like a DJ with a beat and the guy would just kind of essentially freestyle. Yeah. You know, Yellow Man yeah. was one of the first people to popularize that. He wasn't the first to do it. But I don't know if you know Yellow Man, huge yeah. fan of him. He blew up in the 80s. But that style was almost like, you know, uh, as far as I know, wherever in the South Bronx, where we kind of give the origin of hip hop yeah. to, I know that they, I don't know, I can't give you anyone specifically, but they were influenced by that coming out of Jamaica. So it's pretty. Oh, that's interesting. It's very broad. Yeah. 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 Well, and then the Latinos in the Bronx had their salsa steps and their and, and, and their rhythms. So they brought that and then b-boying came about and then the dance became. But that was the first time that people like were concretizing it into something that was marketable. But, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about its origins, it goes so far back. And I'm super fascinated by dance and music in general uh, because I'm so ingratiated in the communities. I've seen your dance video. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I love dancing. I mean, as a dude, it's sometimes a weird thing for people to say, but I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I really enjoyed it. It brings me a lot of joy, so I'm yeah, pretty that's fine. unapologetic about it. But uh, I was going to talk about heavy metal. Uh, mm. First time I listened to that shit was when I was in the military. 
I was hanging around white people long Hold enough. The fuck, you were in the military? <laughs> we never touched on this. This is going to be hilarious. Wait, Canadian military? Yeah. You and yeah. all 80 of our soldiers were together. <laughs> I want to know. That's such a, <laughs> such a wanna... misconception. Boy. <laughs> I know. Canada's got a military? No, no, I got a bu- Let's go. I don't mind. No, no, I got a couple of buddies who are in the military still. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, Kirk, is actually still in the military right now. Okay. Uh, Elite are military. Did you know that? They're fucking. They're just not as many as other countries, but they're fucking good. Yeah, they're That's really good. good. Yeah, yeah, Canadian forces are really well trained and really well yeah. equipped. So they go and do a lot of missions. But, but I want to hear about this. This is. But yeah, I remember in my platoon, they would just play all kinds of stuff. And I remember, obviously, people get mad at me if I say Iron Maiden because they're like, "That's fucking pussy shit." But I thought no, it's that not. Shit was I great. love Iron Maiden. <laughs> I, yeah, look, oh, you're in that pussy shit. I'm like, I don't care. It sounded pretty good to me. I, I don't want to meet the people who call that pussy shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people get upset. They're like, "Oh, that's the mainstream right. stuff." But um, yeah, it's mainstream because it's fun. Yeah, it was great. I, I mean, like the guitar solos was were great. I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. But I remember I would just hear it, and I was like, oh, not this shit again, because I was the only one who didn't <laughs> listen to this shit. Mm. And eventually, they won me over. I started downloading a few Iron Man tracks, <laughs> yeah. and then I played that in like the closet. I wouldn't show my, my homies back home. But uh, <laughs> but I liked it. I liked it. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah there's some, there's some. Me- I like melody, I like, but I, I, I don't pumped. like the throat stuff. Amped. I can't do, you know, the... Oh, yeah. The, wow, death no, metal. I can't do no, that shit. Okay, okay. Oh, Get out of Monica, there. Go, okay, give me some love. Death metal. Yo, Get let's go. Okay, because that's, that's where I drew the line No, well. I can't, dude. Yeah, yeah. I got my buddy Alex, who you met. He was on the 40s. Dude, he fucking... He, he could listen to, like, that that black metal. I can't do any of that shit. No. I can't. I'm like, you can't even understand what the fuck they're saying. This doesn't motivate me. I'm scared. I can't go to sleep now. Why am I listening to this? Isn't I can't. it called Screamo? Yeah. There's scre- there's all kinds of different death like metal, words for it. There's death metal, 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 but I can't. Uh, I like Iron Maiden. Really dark. <laughs> <laughs> black metal, black metal is. It's is, not like four dudes from Harlem. Yeah, like, man, we love guitars. But black metal is just Abba singing like his rendition of Iron Maiden songs. No, <laughs> I'd be up there. It's, that shit's fucking. It pumps you up. Yeah, I, I think the most interesting thing is I find um, you know the, the 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 draw to that kind of music and then gangster rap is just the aggressivity yeah. of it. And I think uh, I, I read a study somewhere recently where it said that uh, suburban white kids, especially, really gravitate towards the two genres because their lives are so tame. They they mm. naturally want that excitement, that yeah. thrill, that kind of bloodlust that they find in the music, and then it it, to- it talks to them. Have you ever been to real suburbs? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to real. Dude, suburbs. Dude, it is. I grew up in the West Island, man. Oh, that is yeah, that is yeah. real suburbs. I yeah, because they party like crazy. They go because they're they're <laughs> off a lot, and it's not like here. Like me, I remember I could. I was a young kid. I was well, ten years old. I fucking get on the metro. You know, you hang out in the neighborhood, you're playing the out. There's all kinds of shit happening. There's stores. If you're in the real suburbs where there's nothing, you need a car to get a, to civilization, mm-hmm. you get fucking bored. Yeah. You get oh, bored yeah. after a while. There's so much that, there's only so far that a video game will take you. Or There's only so much weed you can smoke in the yeah. park. And that's, that's when we did, or that's get when, drunk way too early. That's, yeah. that's why when you see these cases of people doing meth and stuff and you find out that they're fucking suburban kids, or mm-hmm. you're like, really, how did they get, because they got nothing to do. They're like, I need some more excitement. Yeah. Fucking, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I reached my pinnacle with weed. Let's try some fucking crack. Let's, you know, let's keep. Uh, up in the ante it's fucking insane what they uh, we never think like I, when I was young and I would think about suburbs I would think that they lived amazing no, these fucking no. sheltered li- like, fuck suburbs me. are scary to me you get, yeah me too you get bored it I, sucks I, especially I, if you're not if there's a misconception too that you're like wealthy if you're from the suburbs that's not true like we didn't you know we didn't really have a car we lived in a townhouse like we weren't doing well but so many of my friends were super well off oh so it was like it was almost having this class anxiety all the time. Man, I grew up poor around rich people. <laughs> it sucks so bad. <laughs> it is a bad thing because you, know? you see, look across the street, like Timmy's got two, three cars, and you yeah. go to his place and fucking they got food everywhere, and it's like you don't have it to coming, wait till yeah. mom cooks everything. Like they have know, names. Coming like back home was always so shitty. Yeah, you know, yeah. they come this vast, expansive living room. It's like everything's untouchable. Like come home, it's just man. cigarette smoke <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> and just fucking. Yeah, sleepovers were the shit, man. I would sleep over for weeks, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, come yeah, home. Yeah. Can I, that was always great. Can I live here? Yeah. <laughs> we God, have snacks. Friends. That was the one that blew me away. Oh, yeah. I'd go to my white friend's place and I'd sleep over and they had snacks like Dunkaroos and Dude. roll-ups. And I was like, oh my God. I and they're like, yeah, help yourself. And I was like, these are not rationed? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> help myself? <laughs> my mom oh, would man. never. God if, forbid, yeah. If, if a jar of Nutella made it into our house, she said, oh. if I catch any of you fuckers touching this <laughs> yes. shit, the ass whooping you would get. But at this place, it was like, take everything. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, take yeah. some leftovers home. I'm like, what? You can take this stuff to go. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit roll ups, the whole fucking roll up in yeah. one go. Yeah. What the fuck is this? You guys live in an alternate Scrooge reality. McDuck? What is going on here? But to say this as an adult, I feel super uneasy around suburbs now. I think Me too. as a pedestrian walking through like these like perfectly neat pu- houses and everything like that, it makes me feel weird. It's also quiet in a way that makes me uneasy. I think I'm just used to city noise and life. Mm. Uh, you know, getting around without a car, pretty much impossible. You learn how to drive or you die. And yeah. um, as someone who enjoys public transport and the conven
I don't know what it is about the suburbs. It just it makes it's me depressing. uneasy. It, it is depressing. Yeah. It, it makes me uneasy to go out. I, I was uh, I was in Houston last month. I was um, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. That's a, that's a shithole country, city, <laughs> bro. It's a shithole city. And yes. I, I I got to stay with with uh, with my girlfriend's parents in in in, the su- in that. She showed me all around the neighborhood and stuff like that. It's the second time I've been. She's there. from Houston. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I I shared a video on Instagram. It's still on one of my highlights. Christmas decorations, dude. There was a a lot of houses were like this, but the one that I videotaped, dude, the house looked like a storefront. You think you're at a store? So many lights and fucking deers, and it, it looks like you're walking into a mall. Uh, why? Because these housewives get fucking bored out of their goddamn mind, and there's nothing to do there, dude. If you, we had to drive a half hour to get to what they consider downtown, which is shit, everything closed shit. at ten. Yeah. You'd get. I, I, that's why I'm saying a lot of these kids, if they grow up like that, of course they're gonna start doing drugs and doing crazy shit. You get fucking bored and you go mental. Yeah. What are you gonna do over there? Yeah. I'm depressed just you describing that oh, situation, dude. man. <laughs> and me too. Same thing. I feel uneasy, you know, because it feels. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you know there's people living there, for some reason I get the feeling of desolation. Yeah, it disconnect. Feels, yeah, it feels yeah. Dis- de- it feels like you're the last person on earth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then the fake highs. That's also weird to me too. The howdy neighbor, having seen that kind of weird behavior in yeah. suburbs. Yeah. It's like, man, stop yeah. fucking talking to me, homie. Like, <laughs> you know, you yeah. like you want to bring yeah. me in there, try to pull something. I don't like that shit. Just mind <laughs> your fucking business. Yeah, I like in this that in the city there's just so many people that you just put your head down. But you know, even the city, when somebody everybody. talks to me, I don't find it as weird. Colder. Like in the city, somebody t- I don't sure. find it weird. Like, hey man, you got time? Like, yeah, it's this time. But if I'm in the suburbs, somebody tells me the time. Like, motherfucker, you know what time it is? Why are you asking me? You know, I I, I second guess everything. There. Yeah. You have a watch. <laughs> you know what time it is. This is going to sound... I love how presumptuous that is. It's so yeah. good. Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. You got a fucking iPhone. Get out of here. Yeah. This is going to oh. sound like a weird reference, but uh, in dance, we make circles. And when you make circles, you keep it tight because the energy stays in. Right? If it's too wide... It's like when you ever perform in a big, big venue... Like mm. a giant venue that's just super wide and expansive. All the tables are spread out. I only perform in arenas. That's where I bomb uh, hard yeah. every time. But the bro. big reason for that is because the energy doesn't stay tight. The yeah. reason why the works, the comedy works, is such a nice venue is it's such a tight space yeah. and the energy so packed in, it feels good. I think it's the same thing with the suburbs. Everything feels so wide and spread out mm. that there's no real energy or identity to the space. Everything just pff, dies out. And I know for me, spending any time in the suburbs, it's not just the it's it's the concentration of the middle class principles. Do you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. That I just want to have safety. I want a safety net. I want a just nice little lawn that I can mow every now and then. I want to, you know, shovel my driveway and then complain about winter and then yeah. have a nice little house with three bedrooms. Send my kids off to school and then university. That idea of being surrounded by it. It, it manifests in the way the si- the area looks. I find so that's why I think being in the city, it's a little bit more raw. It's a I don't more mind rugged. any of that. I don't mind anything. Of you what don't you mind said. that? No, no, I don't mind wanting to uh, like have your your home where you live. Want to b- send your kids to school, whatever. I don't mind any of that. It's the way it manifests itself in reality. Is is not the way it sounds because the way you made it sound, it sounds good. You could even do that here, like you know, you have your place of living, you got your neighbor, that, but it's not. It doesn't feel neighborly. It, does that make sense? Like, there's houses everywhere. They're all, but I don't feel the same sense of community like here in Park X. When I in Park X, I've done in the summer. I'll walk right. I'll walk with well, let's say Poseidon or whatever. And we'll walk from one end to the other just to get some. We shoot the shit. It's nice and sunny, dude. To do a 20 minute walk will take us two hours because every couple of steps you're gonna see somebody, you're gonna have a conversation. How you been? How's this? You saw these people, you know. There's a bigger sense of community and community living, let's say, here than there is in the suburbs where they have that whole neighbor and they, not at all. Like they're, they're they're not really neighbors. It's like they're just strangers. More superficial, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that that feeling it doesn't exist. Like I'll walk around TMR too, which is a suburb in 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 the summer. Mm-hmm. I see barely anybody walking around. I love it because it's quiet and I'll walk around and it's nice, this and that. But here, dude, you know how hard it is to walk 20 minutes in the summer when everybody's out? You see everybody you know, people yeah. you grew up with. And you just talk and they're more open to talk. It, there's a different sense of community here mm. than there would be in the That's what I'm saying. The suburbs, mm. I understand the concept of wanting to have your safety, send your kids, this and that. Beautiful. But the way it manifests itself is not the way you're making it sound. You know, the way you have it in your head on paper is not at all. You're more segregated. You're more closed. You're, um, despite having all these neighbors, you're still more... Closed off. Yeah, closed off. It's, yeah. it's just a weird... Like I said, I feel when I go, I feel this desolation, you know? Like, I feel it's... It, you can uh, feel the boredom. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I grew up there. I, luckily, I moved when I was six, 16 or 17. We mm-hmm. moved to NDG. And all of a sudden, same thing. When I, I've been living in NDG since then. And same thing when I walk down. If, I, if I'm walking on Sherbrooke between like the Cary and, and Cavendish, like I'm going to run into at least you know 10 people I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a huge exaggeration. But, but I, I know love that, mean, feeling. that feeling. That feeling, yeah. yeah. And, and there's stuff I can do everywhere, you know? It's just like that density. It feels, I don't know. It feels good. Yeah, it does. It does. 
to your point, you say you don't mind it, but a lot of the ideas that you I don't say mind you don't, the idea. You, you don't mind the idea, but it, it's in direct conflict with the way you live. You don't live a traditional middle class life. No, you don't have a nine to five job. For you to live outside of the city and be so far away from other artists, is so inconvenient. So you'd be away from your community. It'd be hard for you to do the stuff that you want to do and engage in the struggle That's that you want to engage. So as artists, to live in the suburbs and to try to do art, very difficult. I it's, think we'd become depressed. I think I've thought about it. Yeah. I feel like maybe I would become. I'd start getting really depressed because. Now, uh, I want to go do a set. You know, you'll go down to the... Dude, it takes me 15 minutes to get down to the nest. It's fucking amazing. You know, the only reason why the work takes me longer is because finding parking. Yeah. That's the, you know, it'll take me 25 minutes. Um, but everything is so convenient. Us, we want to do a podcast. Hi, guys, we're going to get together here. It's right in the middle of the fucking city. Imagine if this podcast, we had to record it in the fucking suburbs. Yeah, we wouldn't have came. Yeah, wouldn't how have, would have been you? <laughs> I would have been you and that <laughs> Kramer poster. Yeah. I wouldn't have come for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so just that that, that that sense of closeness, that sense of always being able to be surrounded by art. Because I mean, as a comedian, you want to be surrounded by comedy as much as possible. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. all the time, but you want to be around it as much as you can be. If you're in a fucking Timbuktu with like one comedy club that has a show every Saturday, you're not going to be just so, starting it's me a every dope ass comedy club in Timbuktu. <laughs> it's one, but fuck, man. So you have to be surrounded by what you want in order to be happy and i think in the suburbs you just don't have the opportunity no. you're surrounded by safety and the middle class ideals and yeah. and those are not the ideals that i don't think most artists and people like us would want to live with so i think that's the uneasiness it's the principle by way that by uh, the principles by which the area is built in that you don't identify with yeah i think the identifying is the big thing i don't feel like i'm part of it do you know what i mean like yeah. i'll meet people yeah. i'll talk to them like yeah they speak the same language you know they're but i don't feel like we're this that ever happened and then i always second guess myself, like oh, why do i feel like this you know what i mean like they look like me you know what i mean they look like human beings they don't look like aliens mm-hmm. they're principles they're, yeah it's just so different stuff they'll say in a conversation and i'm like fuck man it feels so weird like this is you ever had a middle class job or like a you know like a cushy government job or anything like that a christian a, like like a cushy gov- never cushy but like i worked in video games that was fun okay but yeah even video games are a little bit different what about you you ever had like a cushy regular job what do you mean by cushy? Like maybe, yeah. may, maybe you worked. I don't know in an office. Maybe you worked for the government and health <clears throat> services, some shit like that. Not really. I mean, I worked at LASIK MD here for okay. a while, which was that was slightly cushy. I mean, yeah. I, was, I was struggling in a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, in Korea though, not here. Okay, in Korea that was cushy, man, because okay. that was some like some white or beige privilege, what what have you. When you go over to Asia, you're like, oh, they just they love oh. anything, man. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so easy to make money over there. That's awesome. That's uh, good. That's wild. Abba, if I wasn't into going to Asia there right now, <laughs> <You> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm, uh, I'm ready for that just yet. Soon, yeah. uh, I used to work uh, for the government and not just in the military. Other words, and um, I worked for Census for one summer and I and I quit early on. And the lady got mad. Yeah, it's, I don't know about you, but me working around those people, th- the things that they talk about, the the things that they're interested in, the way they live was so contradictory with myself mm. I couldn't identify with any of them I yeah. couldn't even like build a real relationship they come up to me like I can't wait to renovate my bathroom I'm yeah really, I've mm. been in those conversations I don't give a fuck and, and these are the yeah. only superficial conversations so there's an uneasiness I feel because I'm like this person is like a it's like a shell there's yeah. the, you know like who's inside I don't know and I don't think they know themselves so it's weird to be around someone who's trying to talk to you about their life mm. but they don't really have much of a life to discuss you know, and I'm used to talking to colorful people. I grew up in a colorful neighborhood around characters. So I go around these shells, and that's what suburbs are to me. They're these nice sure. shells. And, you know, mm. when we, are, we deal in substance. That's yeah. what comedy is. Well, that's what our lives are. You look into North Korea because you want to see the substance of their suffering, of their reality. You look into other things. You look into soccer because of the substance of competition. So how can you live in an area that has not? That doesn't have that at all. I mean, the big reason why entertainment's so popular in the suburbs, why gangster rap, is because it's substance-filled. Yeah. You know, so when you live a life that's a shell, you try to fill it with things, drugs, you know, sex, yep. all these kind of fucking uh, e- extremist behavior because you need to fill yourself. But if you're full, if you're fulfilled, you don't, I feel zero need to do cocaine. Or zero. Or anything. Zero. I've never done cocaine. I've never done any. No, I've tried it. Either. It's cool, but I'm, I don't need it. Like, you know how easy it was for me to quit booze? And I'm not saying, people have different motivations, just to be fair. But in my case, it was a, it was like a, I want to feel something, so I would drink. But now that I'm fulfilled in my life, there's zero desire to. Everybody finds it weird when, because I don't drink, Uh you know? And even uh, a lot of times it happens at the club, like somebody's, uh, oh, you sure you don't want one drink right before you go on stage? Come on, shot, do a shot with me. It's, the thing is, I don't, not, 
it's not even a, a philosophical reason. It's just for me, when I first started doing, I never got drunk to go on stage. I like being sober because I like being sharp. I'm thinking mm. about a lot of things. You know, sometimes something might come in my head. I'd be like, fuck it, I'm just going to say this. I feel like it'll fit here. I like being sharp. And also, I never needed uh, people say, oh, drink, it's a social lubricant. It'll eat. I never needed that. Mm. Like, we just shoot the shit, I guess, with other comics too. There are some that have to have a drink, but most of them, I feel like we don't need that extra step. We're already l- lubricated. We're fucking social. We're ready to crack a joke. And not fuck all around. of us. Not, not all, all of us. us. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I like having a drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and to be fair, just to be it, fair, I, like I just want to do like a little preamble. Uh, some people work really well with it. Some people mm-hmm. have a drink and they work well. And if that's for you, then that's great. That's great. That's what I'm saying. Is that either just because I don't like people judging on my, I don't like doing it uh, the other way as well. Because I don't. It's not a philosophical thing. I don't not drink because I don't believe in drink. It's nothing. Like it's just. I don't have the need for it. I don't feel like, oh, if I don't do this, I'm not going to perform well or something like that. It, it has zero impact on, on my comedy. I don't, and same thing in social situations. You have to force me to drink. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't care much for it. I don't, you know, it's just not my thing. I didn't know you didn't drink. That surprised me. Yeah, a lot of people surprised. Yeah. I look like a big drinker. Yeah, you do. Um, no, <laughs> I don't. You really I, do. I, and the other thing is, I don't <laughs> like feeling drunk. I don't like the feeling of, like, the sloppiness. Yeah. I don't like the what sloppiness. What kind of drunk are you? Um... I'm a quiet. I, I do the opposite. Mm. I become quiet. Interesting. I become quiet because I'm like, oh fuck! I'm dr- like, what am I? You know, I'm gonna sound stupid. I shouldn't say anything. Yeah. So I, I've and I've only been drunk very, very few times in my life. You know, okay. like you probably count it, maybe ten times or something, maybe less, maybe Fucking five. Pussy. Yeah. What about you? What it is. <laughs> I got, man, I uh, I got drunk way too early. Yeah. I almost died of alcohol poisoning the first time. Oh, it was terrible. So I didn't drink through like that. I was like, oh god, my mom's not gonna listen to this. I was like twelve, I think, and then I didn't drink. For a long time, like you know, how many years there? He woke up with a strange man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now I'm looking how contradictory that was. Okay, I got drunk a few times in high school, but not. Fuck, man, people in my high, again suburbs. Fucking kids would get this guy quit, wasted. This, this guy quit school. alcohol at 12 and then started drinking again at 16. I started, no, no, <laughs> he's like, I'm such a no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> I honestly did such it. a fucking hero. <laughs> Guys, I just I want to tell you Here's how much self control I have. Here's my four year chip. When'd you do this? <laughs> Listen, one of my <laughs> chips came between the ages of zero and ten. <laughs> a law came oh. to me at thirteen, and That's he funny. told me, "No, I really actually <laughs> I didn't uh, I didn't really do it in my late teens, early twenties. Like university, I never drank. Okay. That's when everyone goes crazy. Um, but when I went to Korea, the drinking culture is so crazy. Like so, it's so ingrained in the culture to just get blackout because they work so hard. Really." They work so highest hard. rate of suicide. Hard. Yeah, highest rate of suicide yes. in the world. South Korea for teenagers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because fuck, the, the expectation is so high that if you like, if you're if you're in high school and you're like, yo, I'm bottom of my class, you're like, yo, I'm fucked. I'm gonna be working at Seven Eleven. My parents are gonna hate me. Like, I'm gonna be a burden on my family forever. Fuck it, I'm jumping. Oh my god, it's, it's horrible, man. It's, tell them, tell them. Yeah, it's brutal. It's brutal. Capitalism. Am I right? No, it's just. What does that have to do with capitalism? It's, we uh, live in a capitalist the highest comp- because the reason why the society is the way it is because it wants to compete on an economy level so they push their citizens they push the culture and because the culture is so hyper competitive in terms of pushing work product- productivity it has such a negative impact on the citizens thus the drinking people want to escape their reality yeah, ha- we don't I was push being anybody. a little facetious when I yelled capitalism ha- but have you been to a Shalaga Maisonneuve we don't push anybody Yes, but, but but I think with Asian culture mingled in with the way that's, they function, yeah. their form of capitalism isn't healthy. Yeah, okay. it, it, that's exactly it. So, talking about North Korea, so the Americans came, the Korean War was in the early 50s, and it was the Soviets and the Chinese uh, who were essentially supporting the powers in the North, and the Americans were looking after their interests in the South. And they went to war, whatever divisive line happened, you know, North Korea still has vague communist ideals the old cult of personality thing. Um, And South Korea took on this capitalist model from the States and just went nuts with it. Like, South Korea is an incredible country. They were, they went from, like, a third world country in the 50s to now being insanely advanced. Look at, like, when I came back here, this felt like a third world country, I swear to God. In comparison. In in comparison. It's insane. Um, And I'm kind of straying off here, but what I wanted to say before was, Living in South Korea for a while, South Korea has a lot of cults, like Christian cults. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like huge on cults because like there's this, and this isn't poking fun at the culture at all. There's there's positives and negatives to to that ultra capitalist infused with like ancient Eastern philosophies, where people kind of band together very easily under one banner, and that's so. After living in South Korea, I can see kind of how North Korea happened almost because it's right. a cult. It's a giant cult, and in South Korea. There's several cults, like, so, uh, you know, mainly based on 
Christian principles. Oh, that's um, but they went from a third world country to a first world country in like a matter of 50 years. And the country, the, they owed so much money in the late 90s to the IMF, right? Most countries are in debt to yeah. the IMF. The, the South Koreans banded together and gave their gold, their like heirlooms from their family. Everybody pooled together all their money. They're in no debt to the IMF. It's insane. Yeah. There's only like a few countries that are like that. Like Nigeria is one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I so so I, I know about the IMF and stuff like that. But yeah, you said basically about over there. You, I, I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Why did you stop drinking when you were in university? It's not that I... S- I mean... Who did you I wake up next to? Just tell us. I was su- no, I wasn't super interested. I was a heavy weed smoker, man. I would smoke all the time. And I was just like... I, I think <laughs> part of me was always, from the age of 12, was almost like a wannabe Rasta inside because I love reggae so much. Mm-hmm. And there was this concept of like Aital. Mm-hmm. And Aital is like certain things that are pure and, and good and shunning things that are not. And it comes from biblical thing- principles, right? And alcohol in the Old Testament, I believe, is kind of shunned. Uh, and I just didn't like the way it made me feel, honestly. The nausea, again, my first experience was vomiting my guts out. That's so terrible. that scarred me, you yeah. know? Um, and my first experience with cannabis, which was also pretty early, was like psychedelic, mind expanding. I felt amazing physically. I felt great the next day. Uh, so it's like I kind of stuck to that substance and I was like, drink, fuck drinking. I was just like, all oh, these fucking frat boys playing beer pong. Like, no, I'm going to go to the park and talk about philosophy with my I thought it was cool yeah <laughs> but I mean, that was I mean, it, it yeah. sounds like a better alternative yeah. than the beer pong yeah. yeah no no it was Absolutely. but in Korea I didn't have access to that and uh, after a while again that kind of you know in the beginning you're kind of lonely because you don't know anybody hmm. and it's so ingrained in the culture like if you work at a, if you're a foreign person working at a company Samsung for example and you're living in Korea you work like 60 to 80 hours a week like 60 is minimum 60 is like buddy hustle because we're doing 80 you oh, know fuck. so to just, counteract oh, yeah, that they go out at night together with your company and you just fuck it. You would see at 6, 7 p.m. Korean men, middle-aged, in suits, vomiting their guts out, like in the middle of the street, all over the place. Yeah. And it's normal. Passed out on the grass yeah. in a suit. That's 100%. That, that yeah. whole like sleeping on the floor thing happens super often in Japan and in Korea. Yeah, it's, it's wild. So I started drinking crazy really heavy there. The yeah. pressure that they feel... Yeah, you, they had to deal with it somehow. We're doing our Asian so, tour? Oh, well, we're setting that up? <laughs> actually, my, I started comedy in Korea, right? And uh, people kind of kind of rolled. Man, when I was telling people that when I started in the season. There's a lot of expats. Like, so much eye rolling, you know? Why? I don't know. People like you, because people would be like, you know, when I started, people were like, oh, it's your first time? It's pretty good for your first time. And I'm like, no, I started in Korea. And they'd be like, it's your first time. And I'm like... That would happen a lot. I'm like, yo, I they had some good. Nobody comics takes Korean seriously. No, because I don't know what they were pic- picturing. But at the time, you know, I stayed quiet for a long time. Like, I still do. I'm like, I'm not gonna argue. Think, who cares, really? Yeah. But the reality is, I had like a year and a half of experience. Granted, I was doing it few and far between, right? I'm not doing mics every week. But like, and I was way in over my head. Like, they would bring in big comedians every couple months. I got to open for Kyle Kinane when I was like a couple oh, months. Oh, I like in. Kyle Kinane. Yeah, he's great. A couple months in. So that that helped me get more confident quickly, even though I wasn't doing a lot of mics. Um, but the the point is, my goal, what I would love to do when if I if and when I do want to record a comedy album, is go back there yeah. to where I started, do a little tour, get that material because there's a lot of material that I still think had good grounds, Potential, yeah. but I had to abandon it completely because a people didn't understand it, or b it came off as like, I don't want to come off as racist. There was one, there's one bit I had that was a closer, which even Kyle Kinane at the time was like, yeah, it's a pretty good bit. And I was like, <gasps> maybe I can do this. That was like one of the things where I'm like, maybe Kyle Kinane said this was a good bit. But it was about, you have to live there for it not to come off as, as just stereotypical. Yeah. And it's just com- talking about how when you talk to a Korean person you've never seen for the first time, they sound like they're looking at a person who's watching. It's, it sounds like you're talking to someone who's watching fireworks and not a human face. Uh-huh. And it's just when you live there and you've gone uh-huh. through that, you relate it, but it was just like, oh, where are you from? Oh, I remember this bit. Right? No, I've definitely heard you do this bit. I, sc- I dropped it because I felt like the people who were laughing were like, ah, ha, ha, you're doing funny. Oh, Asians go, oh, and I'm like, no, that's, it's, th- it's what's crazy is it's like, they've never seen somebody who looks like me. So it's like this explosive experience when you're in Korea and experience that it's like, okay, hmm. I see what you're saying. When I come here, they're like, "Ha ha, Asians are funny," and you're like, "No, I'm I'm gonna dropping this." Bit. I, I, I think I don't think you have dropping. to drop it. I think if you just find a way to kind of relate yeah. to the Canadian experience and how we react for the first time when we see certain things, because there's certain things that you might do 
like that'll blow Canadians' minds. I'll like, mm. poof, like they'll just go fuck. Yeah. So if you find that element mm-hmm. as well, then I think you can find a parallel where they can understand it without saying like, oh yeah, Koreans are always just so amazed by random shit. If you, yeah, that we find if you find the same parallel between Canadians and North America, then I think it's fine. I don't. I, I remember hearing I'll that try bit. It. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, I think sometimes you give up on bits a little early. A little early, it happens because yeah. yeah. we yeah. don't get the. But when you go back it was to a Korea, closer in Korea, it was like guaranteed. Like this is gonna be a good. You know, if I didn't have a good set, I'm like, okay, I'll save it with this. Yeah. And um, here, the thing is, there was one. It's the reason I liked it is because I could use callbacks and I can change those callbacks. Yeah. Because yeah. it would always. I have a bit in the beginning of my set, which I've, I'm straight away from now. I'm trying new stuff, but it's like. A real story growing up in the suburbs in the West Island, a kid going up to me and saying, Go, go back to Afghanistan, oh, yeah, yeah. you dirty packy. Love right? that bit. Oh, yeah. So it, I changed it when I got here to like, blah, blah, blah. There's he asking me questions. Then I tell him I'm from Lebanon. Ooh, okay, very appropriate for Lebanon. Yeah. And then he thinks a second. He goes, Go back to Afghanistan, you dirty packy. And that was a good way to kind of call back yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. just make it silly and be like, Oh, I guess there's kind of racism everywhere. Huh. Um, well, there is but, some racism from what I heard. I know from my black friends oh, who, who dude, went to Korea. Dude. dude. They, they they definitely experience racism. M- me being, you know, I can kind of pass as a white guy depending on my, you know, yeah. depending on in winter I'm way like, but also depending on what your interpretation of me yeah. is. But still, just me in Korea, like, it was way different than, you know, uh, John Smith, blonde hair, blue eyes. Like, he was like, worse. and I don't even want to, I ne- would never even think, dream of complaining in front of my in front of my black the first friends i made were like the few black expats because we were kind of like bonding over how we're not we're you're kind of cool as a foreigner but you're like you're not the when they think america they think blonde hair blue eyes you know like tall you know and if you're not that they're kind of disappointed they're like oh, oh you're that's cool you're a foreigner but uh, you're not you're not, you're not what we wanted yeah. eh, you're not you're america no yeah, i always feel not. bad for guy, black guys who like i love asian women or like china like like fucking japanese i'm like you're gonna have a time t- tough time niggas yeah. like, there's like, gonna they, be some they, struggles for you there, there's some serious oh man i was i was i was uh <laughs> i was going home one night and i was with this this girl this black girl and she had uh braid she had like super long braids and we were on the metro it was like 6 a.m and this older korean lady just comes up to her and she starts yelling I, at the time my Korean wasn't great I don't know what I imagine kind of, some kind of epithets and she's just like pointing at her pulling her hair Holy and like shit. ugh Maybe and they like, knew each oh, other. Maybe geez. they had some history. No, I don't th- it was pre- now you now you get a fucking glimpse of tour or, or, or reality, bro. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> People man, come in the metro, pull your hair, motherfuckers. That was happening. Oh, I'm sure you had, had your hair much. touched unconsensually in the metro so many here. Times. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I'm sh- I, I have a bit about like how some it, like man. white guy just came up to me one morning, and was like, "Hey, you fucking nigger," and I was like, "Oh, this is a great start." Just randomly yeah, in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it in my set. People like that's not real. I'm like, I want you to start your day off knowing that I hate you. You know what I find is like I hold so many stories back. I'm like, if you think this is not real, nigga, you have not heard anything. So it's just like I hear this story, I'm like, yeah, I believe it. It's oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, I f- like I was like, you know, if you're a black expat living in Korea or even China or Japan, I'm like, props to you, man. You because you've been able to just like <laughs> block out all this bullshit that you get on a daily basis, dude. The kids <laughs> would go to me because in summer I get like a few shades darker, right? And then summertime they're like, teacher, you dirty, very dirty. Why skin so dark? And it was like, ugh. And I'm like, imagine what my black friends Holy go through. Holy shit. Imagine, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. just imagine what they go through every day. Yeah. Would I, they classify me as white? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You're, you're passing. I'd be born to white guys. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're passing. 100%. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> let's go. Never, that's a, it never is an interesting one. Because even Lebanese the, people are that, That's why border. I would just never let them see my last name. I'd be like, yeah. it's You're a darker day. shade, though. You're definitely a darker shade of Lebanese. From what I've been I used to, like yeah. a lot, of, like I'm not saying that you're not yeah. the norm. Like there's still definitely, yeah. but there's a lot of lighter Lebanese people that I've met so far. Right. Yeah. I think now, like in summertime, definitely I'm 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 one of the like I stray to one side, right? Because yeah. yeah. uh, like my brother, my brother has his like exact same skin tone as you, Pantelis. Like he, he yeah. you know, he would he's almost always considered a white person. My sister's kind of in between. My sister's like mm, depends. Me, it depends on the context. It's yeah. it's really interesting. It's something I'd like to talk about on stage. The best is know? when I go to Crete. They're like, you don't yeah. see any sun. Why are you so white? Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. you're yeah. from here. Like, why? Like, you should have. Yeah. I was like, no, I guess I don't see enough sun. I don't know what the fuck happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, you asked me, like, does that really happen? And I'll tell you, imagine here, we, we shun people who are racist. Like, yeah, if you're no racist, shit. like, imagine being in a country where you're not used to seeing... Mm. Minorities and there's no repercussions for being racist. Mm-hmm. No social repercussions. Sounds like I mean, a, that lady going up to like them. A utopia. No one's gonna come up to her afterwards and call her out. 
You know what yeah, I'm saying? There's, yeah, she's yeah. not losing her job. Absolutely That's nothing's right. gonna happen here. There's and we still deal with it. So I can only imagine. I have friends who go to China, and this guy has an app from Black. Can we take a picture with you? Like they're mm-hmm. a tourist attraction. Imagine, imagine you're walking around and you look so strange to someone. They need to take a picture with you so they can show their friends. Mm-hmm. Like you're a freak show. I you feel like that saying? happens already. They just do it without me knowing. Yeah, they're just like. <laughs> this clown looking Man. motherfucker. The shit that passes seriously. Like, we were talking about like there's no repercussions. Absolutely not. It's very slowly starting to change because there's so many expats. Uh, but there was a Korean TV show, very popular, where they fucking put on blackface. Yeah. Big, you know, like made red lips like crazy. Like just straight up. Like I did that for a talent show. Yeah. Oh, yeah it was, uh... And what did they do with this? The two guys had put on blackface and then they had a watermelon eating competition. And this is was that, like does five that stereotype years ago. exist there too? I thought these were only like North American stereotypes. Sometimes I get surprised at how but far steal it certain stereotypes go. I'm like, this is American impressive. culture is exported to everybody. Exactly. And the Americans are the ones who kind of save, save, you know, not everybody sees it like that, right? Because they, South Korea is an American military base. That's why it's doing so well. Yeah. It's an American military. Oh, yeah. There's bases all over that country. Yeah. It's basically their stronghold in Asia. Yeah. yeah. Not um, even. And uh, they brought the, like this f- Americans from the 1950s came in, and I'm sure there's a lot of black soldiers. But that that's their first ah. exposure to America, this country that, according to America, saved them right in a sense, and perhaps rightly in some ways, but also, you know, again, let's not get too too into it. But uh, America's an empire, right? And that's one of their that's just one of their strongholds. Uh, but they they got those ideals. Here's an example. I was. Uh, having a debate class with like quote unquote advanced kids, English wasn't great, but they could kind of speak. And um, at the time there was, uh, I can't remember, there's so many mass shootings in the States. One of them happened and I was like talking about gun control. And I was like, in South Korea, guns are illegal. What do you guys think about, say gun control in America? Do you think guns should be illegal or how should we you know, criminalize it? One kid, I'm not kidding at all. One kid, 60 year old Korean kid, he's never left Korea. He goes, oh, okay, I won't do the accents because I'm racist. He goes, in uh, in America, they uh, they needed guns because the white people needed guns. Because in history, there were so many crazy black people always trying to kill the white people. <laughs> so the white people needed guns to defend themselves from the crazy black people. Yo, I'm down with that kid. And I, I was I like, believe I must <laughs> yo, my jaw just dropped. I'm like, where the fuck? Where did he where hear you that? Learning, like, where did where he learn that? Do you know why people should not all be allowed to vote? <laughs> you guys understand why I said people, some people should not be allowed no. to. He's only two years away from voting. Yeah. And he, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, that's how like, easily media transfers Im- information. But so, where did he hear that? This well, I'm, so I wanted to, I, was like, I asked him where did he hear that. And he just, I started, I got a little you know what bit happened? angry. They showed I got him a videos. Bit angry. They showed him videos of the LA riots and, like, this is everyday life in America. Maybe some KKK <laughs> pamphlet. But the thing is, the racism exists in the culture, right? Um, that's, I, the reason that, that, that Black History Month bit kind of came, the thing is, like, and I already feel bad for kind of interrupting you when Black History came up, and I was like, "Let me hear my opinion." No, 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 I don't I, mind that at all. So because like, you, it's, your opinion is so much more relevant. But like, and it's hard to say this as a non-black person because I don't want to write a bit that's on your benefit, yeah, claiming yeah. to be with your benefit on yeah. my behalf. Because yeah. I haven't been through this shit, and my people and my yeah. forefathers haven't been through this shit. But like, I really do. It, something angers me where I almost feel like it's personal, where like, you know. Blacks in America have a hard time, but then you go to fucking Philippines, you go to China, you go like there's racism against black people in the Middle East. Mm. There's racism against black people in every corner of the world. It's it's insane. Even in the indigenous, even in the native population of of, of America, like it's not even racism against black people. It's it's, a, it's colorism. So you go to any country, even in black countries, they prefer to be. There's, there's bleaching right. products. I That's heard about right. this. Yes. So you go to this, India, yeah. the darker the cast, the more you're discriminated against. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a bit I, I have in regards to like Disney characters and how the villains are always darker shades than the, the protagonists. You look at Aladdin, Jafar. You look at mm-hmm. uh, Mermaid, uh, Ursula. You oh. look at mm-hmm. Pocahontas. Uh, no, no, Pocahontas is a bad one. But, Scar, uh, Scar the Lion King. Scar the Lion King. One. Every single one of them, though, the, the, the evil villain. Mm-hmm. And so we have these associations <gasps> with the idea of light and dark. Yes. One being evil, one being... So inherently, when we start the game... so. White lies. White lies are, are, are negative things, but because they're white, you know, they're, they're, they're seen as a little bit positive, mm-hmm. necessary lies. Whereas dark truths are like evil things that you should say, but like they're still evil. That's so hilarious. So inherently in our language and the way we mm-hmm. transmit ideas, blackness, darkness, anything relating to that is always seen as evil. Subconsciously, it's ingrained in us. It's why three-year-olds who can't even talk, they did this study, 
they put uh, three-year-olds white and black children, right? And they showed them pictures of a black baby and a white baby, and they said, pick which one's evil. They always pick the black child. These are kids that can't even talk, that haven't even been transmitted ideas, but the imagery they see everywhere around them has already informed them that black is already inferior. But wait, it's wait, uglier. Wait, was it a generic baby? Who was that baby? What if they were right? <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if the black baby? They made the exact same baby, they just changed the skin color. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can just fail that shit. Like, there's baby Hitler <laughs> and there's Bob Marley, and they're like, Bob Marley, like, no, fuck me. <laughs> so, so inherently, we already have these kind of biases. Yeah. So the idea that you can go out other places, like being black is positive nowhere. That's just a mm. fact. It's either the, 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 the norm when you're in Africa, yeah. but even then it's not a benefit. Like if you're a white person in Africa, there's a lot of benefits to being a white person. You're mm-hmm. called an expat. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm coming yeah. here, I'm somehow and an immigrant. you're an immigrant. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah the language is yeah. very definitive that's in the way That's fucking funny that you said that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. I never thought about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's all these subtleties that you notice, and this is why the, the importance of black history is that I'm sensible to this kind of stuff, and I talk about these kind of things because I understand what I'm seeing through the history that I've learned. So, you know, you talk about this in Asia, Pick anywhere. Uh, Latin America, they mm-hmm. don't like black people. Mm-hmm. You go to Argentina, they hate black people. But you're mixed with us. Why do you think you look the way? You're not a native population. You're already gone from that. You mm-hmm. mix with us and you're something new. But they hate that idea of their roots. The idea that people are putting toxic products on their skin to, to be lighter. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is in black countries that's, too. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. The self-hate is strong. Yeah. Middle East. Asia, South America, everywhere it happens. Yeah. And I wonder if it does go back to that fundamental, like, darkness versus light. Because that's what, you know, before when we were all worshipping the sun and shit, yeah. darkness was a scary-ass time. Yeah. Like, nighttime was... I yeah, I think it's more... Uh, yeah, you might be right. I don't yeah, know. It's a symbolic. It, I mean, if, if you were in the dark, yeah. you were definitely... That fire was the final tr- opportunity. That like, was the first opportunity to see everything and to have that ability to fight the darkness. So you didn't want to be dark. Also, the idea of being dirty. Dark, all that's mm-hmm. associated with darkness, so... That's uh, it's 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 ingrained in our symbology. It's ingrained in our language. The way we communicate. Yeah, why, it's written, add, into, add the, it's written into Arabic language. Yeah. Uh, when you were saying it's written into the language, I just realized it's fucking insane. When you want to say like I'm putting my best foot forward in a sense, you, the expression, the direct translation in Arabic I'm is on I'm face. white. No, I'm whitening my face. I'm whitening my yeah. face. Yeah, it's and to darken your ingrained. face is kind of like to to be shameful or to you know. Yeah. That's written into the language. This is fucking interesting. Yeah. 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 You know what's funny? People are going to watch this podcast and be like, oh, I'm ready for the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get like serious. These, these dark motherfuckers. <laughs> right? But, but it is important to note that. Yeah, no, man. I'm, I think this is a great fucking episode. I like it. I'm just saying yeah. a lot of people have that misconception. Like we said, they read the headlines. Like, what? Wasim Abba? This is going to be great. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, I love to. I, I always shoot the shit. Are you shit. implying it's not? <laughs> and you catch me at like the comedy spots. They're going to talk about ha- happy <laughs> shit. Yeah. They come in, it's like racism is a fucking thing. But we I joke. stopped drinking because. Yeah. We joke so no, much. When, yeah. when we're hanging out at oh, the comedy yeah. spots, we're yeah. always joking. But yeah. I mean, on my spare time when I'm like at home and I'm reading up on I'm stuff. I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I could have derailed the conversation. I'm sure any of us could have yeah, joke, But point. like when he's going off on stuff, I'm trying to listen and trying yeah. to, yeah. you know. I don't I li- wanna... I'm not mad. I like it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I prefer this because, uh, you know, they come to the shows. They see the videos, right? They get their comedy. They also want to see that we're real fucking people with real thoughts too, yeah. Yeah. right? Which is the basis of why we're insane. Yeah. It's all this <laughs> shit that goes on, right? It gives us a reason to talk about stuff. It mm-hmm. gives us a reason to be passionate, right? Passion is a big thing. You know, when, you're, when, when we were saying before, like, this is kind of making, I was saying, it's kind of making me angry, and perhaps... It's a huge part well. of our job is passion. I think I think it's part of the reason I gravitated towards comedy is there, there is a bit of anger in there a little yeah. bit. Towards a lot... Outwardly directed to a lot of different institutions, a lot of ideas. Uh, I felt it just now when you were all talking about racism all around, and you were saying why it's because, uh, oh, they're scared of darkness and that. I was just surprised that neither of you brought up, again, property value. Like, as if... That's not a reason <laughs> people don't want to see the Going property. back to the jokes, Pat <laughs> I was like, yeah. where, where is this going? And then he was, I was like, this like, guy's going to make was, a I was like, nigga. I was, watching, I, was watching nigga. His, I was watching his face because I go, he's going to make a face when he realizes it. He was like, motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you were saying? Uh, yeah, it comes from um, a lot of like the, you know, uh, going back, like we're talking about the fucking you know American Empire and the, like history of, of, of exploitation where in the beginning we're talking about shithole countries right a lot of my anger uh, comes from you know now I don't super only identify with being Middle Eastern but when I was younger that's that was your my identity that's what I am is a Middle Eastern person right even though I'm so far removed and I grew up here and I'm lucky to have that but seeing being so politically minded at an early age because my you know my parents and a lot of our, our parents are uh, seeing like 
the Iraq war, for example, that still boils my blood that they were able to get away with that shit. Yeah. You know? And I think like part of that anger has stayed with me. And part of the reason I kind of joke about my ethnicity at times is kind of stemmed from that anger almost. Yeah. It's kind of being able to make light of a, a situation that's, that's made me so fucking <laughs> infuriated. angry. Infuriated is the word, yeah. yeah. Well, this is why I say I don't tell anybody what they have to do in comedy, but I think when you're on stage, you're giving yourself to people. Yeah. Right? That's essentially... And I think if you hide back those real emotions that you feel about things, then you're cheating the audience a little bit out of who you are and you're keeping some parts because you have to be vulnerable up there. And to be vulnerable is to discuss difficult things, in my opinion. So the fact that you feel that way and that it sometimes reflects in your comedy is the fact that you're trying to go to those places. Yeah. So... That's why I always empower people when they try or when they try to discuss something. Even your opinion on Black History Month is not something I'm upset. I think it's good that you're discussing it and you're even going to those places about your opinions. And as your opinion becomes more nuanced, so will your jokes. Mm -hmm. and, and then they'll have layers. And then they'll be undeniable. I mean, I do some jokes about rape and sexual assault. And uh, because I've really taken the time to research and All read up on it. All first-hand experience, yeah. <laughs> some of them. We'll, we'll actually talk about that after. But uh, because I, I've taken time to really nuance my opinion, I'm able to kind of cut through that, that tension that's created as a man when I speak about this because the audience is like, okay, this guy actually has something valuable to say about yeah. this. We're going to listen. So I think you can discuss anything so long as you come at it from a nuanced opinion and you look at it from every angle. So you guys want to yeah. discuss Black History Month and you there's arguments to be made. Do your research though, right? Yeah, that's do your thing, research. You know? Because obviously I can't get mad at an audience member. I remember... Um, there's a guy who does a joke about uh, uh, gentrification. Essentially, he's like, oh, well, the neighborhoods become better when they're gentrified. And the joke's not necessarily bad. I, I kind of chuckle at it. But it's not that very nuanced. So I'm not surprised that some audiences are going to reel back because I'm like, yes, it is a little bit better. But what does that really mean? Or what Did you make it better by just kicking out poor people? Yeah, exactly. That, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's not that nuanced. I do a joke about homeless people that's super not nuanced. I enjoy it because it's, I'm a piece of shit. But uh, I know it's not nuanced and I know I have to improve it eventually. But you have fun. There's a lot of it, like, we can't forget who we are, right? Yeah. We love to laugh. I yeah. love to laugh. Yeah. I love to like the shit I, I tell Abba, the shit I, uh, I love it, right? I love laughing. A lot of other people could see it and right away be like, "Oh well, he's not thinking deep." You know, it's not real. Abba doesn't really bring down the property value. And walk. I, I know, I know, dickhead. It's yeah. a joke. It's a you joke. Know? Yeah. So we do have to remember to still stay in with the jokes, yeah. right? Because we do want to mm -hmm. laugh. We want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And most of the stuff we talk about, I think a huge percent does come from somewhere, like our own personal shit. Yeah. But it's so ludicrous, so ridiculous. And we're open about it and we laugh about it. It is funny. Like, to the core, it's funny. Whether yeah. it happened to me and I'm the one saying it to you, yeah. or if it happened to you, yeah. like my bit about Milton, if it, if it happened to you and you said it, it would still be funny. Because yeah. it's just a funny fucking scenario. Yeah. It's just there's certain people like us who are willing to talk about it. Other people like to hide it. Like, oh, no, mm. that didn't happen. I don't want to talk about, you know? No. Or my weight, like when I talk about the airplane and the weight and this and that. Uh, no, I don't want to talk about uh, my weight. It's like, yeah, I'm fat. There, there's, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's, uh, we're, we're aware. Like, I wasn't hiding it up here. Like, yeah. I was like, do you guys, have you guys noticed? Or yeah. did I get away with it? You know, let's address, you know, what happened to me because I'm fat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think comedy is trying, like, without getting too philosophical, you're kind of like trying to seek truth in a sense. You know what I mean? And I think it get, gives you, when you start doing comedy, it kind of gets you on this path of self-discovery almost. You're kind of like trying to discover who the fuck am I? What are my opinions? What are my beliefs? You but know? what's like, your goal? Your goal is always to laugh and to make them laugh. Funny. To be fucking Absolutely. funny. Absolutely. Sure. I don't like the preachiness. You know what I mean? Not even to make them laugh. I, don't, I wouldn't even say that. I think it's, it's to present yourself in a way that is true to yourself. But that's the only way they laugh. Have you, you've seen phonies go up there. I've seen phonies, especially open mic nights, where they go and it feels like they're playing a nah, bit. I know, I know some dudes who like who do acts that I know they're not themselves, but the audiences will still laugh. Because audiences are sometimes generous. or You know, you guys know some comics who are a little hacky or whatever. Yeah. They still get laughs. You can't deny it. But I think uh, as an artist, when you just do art, the, the goal is to be vulnerable on stage, to present yourself in a way. Because if you're always at the mercy of how, how they laugh, you may be in front of audiences who Don't fucking like suck. There's audiences mm. who suck, and, 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 and it's just a fact of life. I mean, if I'm performing for a bunch of 70-year-old retirees, they may not jive with my reality, but my goal is to present myself in a way that's authentic to me, and I try to connect with my audience at the same time. So I, mm -hmm. I think more than trying to make them laugh, you have to m remain in your truth before that. And then from your truth, if you can make them laugh, then that's the ideal situation. That's where I think I stand on. Well, I feel like when I'm, my goal is to make them laugh, but the way I get there is by making myself laugh. Like, I make myself laugh with all the things I say. Yeah. And I feel like that's how I'm being true to myself, right? I'm, I'm making a joke that's for me okay. initially. Yeah. And then the second I feel like they're on board and they're laughing too, that to me, the second I feel that they're feeling my shit, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, like, that's the connection right there. I'm like, I said something that was supposed to be funny for me. You found it funny too. We made it. Yeah. You yeah. know, let's build on this. What do, you, what do you think about comics who don't like their own jokes? I've never heard of that. 
You never heard of that either? Not really. I've heard of You never heard comments like, I hate everything I write? I oh, hear no, no, that all I the time. Okay, I'm that. sick of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I get like sick of things. Started. I don't want to say anything. But not when I write something, people are like, oh, that's a great new joke. I'm like, I don't fucking like it. Like, it's mm, so last really? week. I've never, you can have, I've never heard of that heard shit. No, I've heard a lot of comics tell me they don't like any of the stuff they locally? write. Locally? Yeah, locally. Shit, well, most of those comics, I mean, <laughs> nobody else likes what they write either, so that's the problem. I mean, I, I've heard people kind of say that, but it seems like it's just a very self-deprecating. Yeah. Like, oh, this is all garbage. But I'm like, obviously you don't think it's garbage. You're going up I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I get a lot of flack for laughing at my own shit. I love my I love it. Dude, I laugh at my own shit sometimes, I and then I notice own. if I... But you know when the you audience you're having fun, and they get on your wavelength. There you go. I've noticed sometimes where I try to hold it in but just the way I said it was different or whatever and I hear and it makes me laugh yeah. and then what happens is they start laughing too because like look at this silly motherfucker he can't c- he c- yeah. keep it no. he can't keep control no. he's fucking laughing at his own shit I Absolutely. love laughing at my own stuff because I wouldn't say it if it didn't make me I, I, that's I'm the my first whole tester thing. I'm the first person that tests my jokes mm-hmm. as me I think of something I say so, or something happens to me and I formulate it into a joke and mm-hmm. I'm like oh and then I laugh dude I've been laughing since I posted that thing about Gwyneth Paltrow I don't know if you saw the ass thing I've been laughing at that clip of 30 seconds of myself. I made myself laugh over and over. Just something of the way I say it, mm. m- make it fun of what, it just makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. It, it's me. Mm. My girlfriend's like, that's fucking you. How are you laughing so much at your own fucking well, joke? I mean, you're an arrogant prick, but I mean. But I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's, <laughs> I'm I'm not saying it's the greatest joke. <laughs> but, right? does, but, but you know, we, you might be joking, but it does give that impression off to it, other people. But it's not. It's because I think that's why I'm doing it. How can mm. I do something that I don't think is funny? No. I, it's, it's like those chefs that'll cook something. And that's, be like, that's my bit. That's mm. exactly how it goes. You can't cook your own food and be like, I wouldn't eat my yeah, shit. Yeah, fuck mm. you then. You mm. should enjoy your own yeah, stuff. Yeah, you want to go to a chef that's like, no, no, this is for you peasants. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't do that. I can't go up and be like, this joke is to... For you guys, because you're going to probably get it because you don't think on my wavelength, the mm. simple joke for the simpletons. Mm-hmm. No, man. I write shit that makes me laugh. And if you feel it, I'm like, I know I'm connecting with people. They get me. You know what I mean? They don't take it the wrong way. Like, if I say something and somebody after says, I didn't like it, it was racist. I'm like, yeah, this guy doesn't understand what the fuck I was saying. Mm-hmm. He interpreted his own shit. But it might be racist, too. It's probably racist. That's true. Like, uh, if <laughs> I said what, it. That goes back to the self-discovery thing. You yeah. know, like, sometimes you say stuff like, oh, it's just funny. And then you look back and you're like... Maybe I'm just being a piece of shit and I'm kind of ignorant yeah, about something, shit, yeah. Yeah. you know? I definitely have, have bits that like cross the line that I cut them out. Me too. I've, yeah. I've cut out a lot of material that I'm like, I can't use that anymore. But because you're, you're you're testing the line, you're crossing. I cross it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I cross. Sometimes I'm like, damn, Back I cross that line. But you've yeah. got to test it in order to feel it on stage. Sometimes, you know, that fear of like doing something that's a little bit edgy takes you away from doing a potentially amazing No, no you got to yeah. do it. You got to do it. Yeah. I just noticed, you, you ever say something, the, the best is when it's going well, yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is the time to try this one. And I throw it in there. And then, yeah. you know, when you could cut the room and you haven't offended half, you've literally put everybody on edge. Yeah. You're like, I don't know where he's going with this. If I laugh, I'm going to jail, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then you got to bring them back. Yeah. Even though it's a fucked up moment, I still love those moments because yeah. I'll laugh, I'll address it. I'll be like, all right, I lost everybody. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. And then you talk about it, and then you yeah. can bring them back in. Like, okay, he's aware. He's yeah. aware. That was just, a, you know. Y- There's comics who do that purposely. Yeah, uh, I've seen Bill Burr twice uh, live, and he does that on purpose. Yeah, he will. He literally dig himself a hole that yeah. you're like, you can't get out of this. CK Everyone, does that too. People in the audience start folding back. Yeah. Like, I don't know, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then he you brings know? them back. Yeah, and I then love that. Everybody's keeled over <laughs> in two minutes. <laughs> like, but like, it takes a certain amount. That's like, that's skill. That takes time. That's you know? not like, what Pantelis yeah. is talking about. Pantelis is because Bill Burr knows at the end of the bit is gonna be funny. Yeah, I don't. Pantelis <laughs> goes in with a bit, just digging, kills the eyes. Digging, like, digging. okay, I'm just gonna dig this, but it's never gonna be funny. And then I'll move on to other shit. Yeah, exactly. I just, I knew it was gonna get you mad. I'm moving on to other shit. Like, it's not even like a plan of this is a strategy. This yeah. is like I'm gonna fuck up not your whole night. I'm gonna fuck up two minutes. Okay, <laughs> I'm fucked up on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's completely not as well thought out as Bill Burr. No, yeah. no. no, I wasn't necessarily implying you yeah. were. At all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it, just, it just seemed like you dropped Bella. I was like, but, no, no, yeah. that's not what this thing is. No, no, <laughs> he's being a piece of shit. He's not. Bill Burr's but, not being a piece of shit. I'm being a piece of shit. Yeah, Bill Burr is just touching on something that we feel a lot of tension on, and then he knows he's gonna be able to cut it with his final point, which will bring it all together. Yeah, and then it's super hilarious. Mommy, I'll leave it out there. I'll never address it again. No, I'll leave no. people wondering what does yeah. he mean by does that. Does he really yeah. think that about rape? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's a piece of <laughs> shit. I have a bit. Uh, I have a bit that I've been working on, and it's about like how a girl told me, like, because I don't know how to react when girls tell me they were raped. So this girls like told me a lot. Tell you this? Yeah, I've had because I dated quite a bit, so I've, I've met a lot of women, and they tell me these. I like uh, he uh, slips that in there. I was That's why it. he knows. No, no. He's like, I, I date. Quite I, I a never bit. said. I never said. I get to fuck him at the end. I just go on dates. Okay? Not. I, I I go to these rape Humble. support groups and pick these girls up. He didn't mention that. He just uh, obviously, you
<laughs> if you can make Pantelas go, no, no, man. Because you know what? I, I wonder how hard, because when you feel you have a good line there, but you don't know if you should say it, I wonder how hard it was for him to not say anything. He was probably yeah. looking like this. Terrible. I mean, we, that was all our first thought, kind of. Yeah, yeah. but that's my whole point. Like, it, I don't know if don't it's because rape is so uh, normalized that I just don't even, it's like an after, or I right. can't process how to comfort someone, so I latch on to something I can't understand and try to conversate Comedy. on that. Mm -hmm. So the 10, and it wasn't meant to be a funny joke. It's just like, damn, that's a long fucking time. You said two guys. I assumed that they were just taking shifts. <laughs> I don't assume it was I one. would never go into that with my bit, but I'm yeah. just saying. No, no, I'm not saying it as a joke. I mean, like, I would assume in my head that these two <laughs> Let's guys. Let's not get into the <laughs> semantics. I'm not just this is a tough one to break down. <laughs> Listen, we all want to break this down. It's but not one 10 hour get shift. Into it at all. I feel like they're, they're breaking it down. No, I don't, uh, yeah. was it 10 hours consecutive? I didn't ask why details. Am I See, that's, it's just, that's where it's tough. I like, get we curious could, about as, as A lot of things are going through my head of like how structurally that's going to work but at the same time you don't want to be trivializing no. i'm not trying that's to trivialize it i'm just i don't i'm not implying you th are this all, happened but this that's is real my mouth she's is not lying right to him now. the this reason happened. the only reason i did my bit is not because i had a funny thought or like something that people it's just because i think as people when we hear about these traumatic effects that events that happen to people we have no idea how to comfort them or how to act i know for me like what would you do if someone told you they're what do you do i just oh, exactly so, you see that uh, see, i'm so sorry like why I don't are know. you like you did it like why are you but that's my whole point that feeling it's cultural you're right my and, mom. So, <laughs> and so that's why that thought popped in my head because I don't know how to react. Do I, do, I, do I give you cookies? Do I hug you? Do I, do I, do I yeah. touch you? Do you want to be touched? I don't know. Do I, I can't call the police for you. That, so it's a, it's a weird it moment. Is. And I yeah. empathize so much that I, I'm trying to block out these negative thoughts, but they're here in my head. And I, I feel like a piece of shit afterwards. You Something bad happened to you, but I feel like a, I didn't even do yeah. it. But I feel like a piece of shit. So I'm trying to make that bit work, but it's like... <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's it's a very difficult thing. You shelve that a bit, and yeah, again... But I've been... No, <laughs> shelve that rape time. bit, you know? Keep it on the... But I've been there. Put it in a jar labeled <laughs> rape Serious jokes. situations, and a joke comes out of my mouth, and as soon as it comes out, you know when you regret it? You're like, yeah. why did I fucking say this? I don't regret it, but I know what you mean. Because you have that feeling of there's no way they're going to take this as a joke. Some people will laugh, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of times you don't... But I'm not doing it to trivialize the situation. It's just the way I know how to react yeah. is to make to make us happy with laughter. I can't, like you said, after the effect, like say yeah. when somebody dies yeah. and it's like a weird accident or something like that, you know what I mean? Sometimes if it's it's a good setup for me, I can't help it and I'll say something fucking stupid, you know, and I'm hoping that it'll laugh. Yeah. A lot of times people are like, no man, that is that is terrible. That is a terrible way to go. You shouldn't have made light of my grandfather's passing. Some people you don't know? like that humor. That's why there's a dark yeah. comedy show and stuff like that. Uh, to be fair, Pantels, we were at my grandfather's funeral. When he said <laughs> but what's funny is somebody told me when, they, like, uh, a year he was and a half ago, when my when my grand <laughs> when my grandmother had passed away, right? So yeah. I was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, you know, like I knew it was coming, this and that. You know, it was, uh, it was sad. It was my grandmother, and like, oh man, I'm very sorry. And my immediate reaction was like, why did you kill her? Like, did you mm. like right away? Because I was like, yeah, it's not going to bring her back or anything. And no, you're and, a suspect. And, and, and yeah. You're, yeah, and you're apologizing. Mm -hmm. So it's that's like, your suffering. That's, though. So you're yeah. suffering. You're allowed to internalize it however you want. Yeah. When you talk about other people's experiences. You have I do to understand both that they they can internalize it however they want. I treat you the same way I treat myself yeah. by shitting on you repeatedly. <laughs> that's a fucking asshole. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I want to tell you guys a story. So you may find it interesting. I uh, I had a girl I knew, and she was really into me. I wasn't into her at all. And this lasted for a year. And then one evening during this last winter, we ended up kissing in an elevator, right? So, Oh, this sounds romantic. And how'd you end up in an elevator? What's don't worry, this on? is going to get juicy. You're going to really like this story. So we leave the elevator. I walk to the bus stop. She's like, kiss me again. And I'm like, no, it's too cold. I don't want to pull my hands out. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's a weird excuse. <laughs> no, but I'm dead ass serious. It it's was like minus, cold. It's it's minus like, 27. I'll warm you up. That's an ice that. cold response right yeah, there. Yeah, right yeah. There. <laughs> it's, too, it's too cold. What is my fucking heart? Get on the bus, bitch. Like, so the bus gets there. She's she's like, she's like, kiss me, kiss. I don't I, I don't want to. And she kept pushing. I was like, back off. That you was an elevator. This is in public. It's not the, gonna happen. It's in public. It's night though, so it's okay, you know? You can do you can get a little frisky at night. And uh she gets on the bus, she leaves, and then I, I end up going to see her the next day at her place. And, uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, sexual assault and all this stuff. And she's like, you know, men, sometimes you guys have to understand what no means and not to pressure. And I'm like, bitch, last night. You kept pressuring me to kiss. You were trying to pressure me to kiss you. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, yeah, I recognize that's a little hypocritical. I'm like, it's all good. It doesn't matter. So like, did we say I recognize a little rapey? What did she No, say? I recognize yeah. a little hypocritical. Okay. But it's all good. So uh, we move on. We start kissing. Uh, you know, we kiss once or twice, and I stop. And then she's like, I'm not comfortable. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. No problem. You know, the moment you say that to me, I'm out. I'm not, yeah, gonna, obviously. I'm not pushing nobody. So I leave her place think it's all good i see her on new year's day and uh you know i'm just dancing i'm having a good time I'm having a good party all right and uh you know when someone's looking at you but they're not looking at you they're yeah, looking through your yeah, peripherals yeah, oh yeah. she's pulling that shit on me all night right 
And then eventually she gets frustrated. She grabs my best friend. She starts dancing with him. But I don't care. I'm having a good time. You know, y'all going to get laid? Get laid. I don't give I don't care. Okay, fuck. I'm having a good time. She starts looking me dead in the eyes while she's dancing with this That's dude. fucking weird. Yeah, that's when it got weird, but I didn't say nothing, you know? Yeah, I didn't night. Everything came. I came alone. I left alone. Said I wished everyone a good night, even her. Went home. The next day, I dropped her a message. I'm like, hey, you know, it was a little weird last night. We're going to see each other a lot in the future. Uh, just anything you want to tell me. She sent me a novel, okay? She's like, you came to my place. You kind of pressured me into kissing you. Oh. You made me feel uncomfortable. I, I'm reading this shit, like, with big-ass eyes. I was like, lady, you... You're the one who told me to kiss you and pressure you. And then I came, I kissed you, you weren't comfortable, I left, that's it. Why are you trying to make it sound like I sexually assaulted you? I'm not. Anyways, I'm not going to get into this. So I blocked and deleted her. Obviously. Because I don't want no drama in my life. I, moved, I didn't even reply. I was like, okay. And I just said, blocked and deleted. Moved yeah, that's some crazy shit. That's some crazy shit. Yo, listen. <laughs> Two weeks later, I get a text message. Another novel. She's like, how dare you block and delete me, you piece of shit. You fucking asshole. And I'm like, whoa, this is getting really weird. And then she starts sending me a whole bunch of messages, right? Just like, oh, you know what, you little dick faggot. All this kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. It gets good. It gets even better. <laughs> Jeez. Yo, you didn't tell me how deep you went with her. How did she know wow. about the little dick? I mean, now she's being her. homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> she's body shaming. She's body <laughs> Yo, she went ham. So then I'm like, hey, listen, if I didn't want to talk to you on Facebook, I just didn't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to talk to you in text So I'm blocking either. you on my phone. Okay? I just told her. She's like, oh, you're up in your feelings. I said, it's all good. Then I get a message on Instagram. Oh, okay. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <avenue. laughs> going to start telling you <laughs> telegrams and shit, <laughs> So I get a mess on Instagram. She's like, yo, you know, you know, you say you're such a private person, but I heard from another friend of mine that your dick doesn't work. And then she sent me a message like you were probably in love with me and I didn't reciprocate. And that's why you're a piece of shit. I'm going to block. Oh, this it. is insane. Crazy stuff. And she's like, yeah, if I ever see you and you say anything about this, God you know what? I'll yeah. go to the police. And I was like, woman, are you crazy? And I, I guess this is a long story. But anyways, I ended up blocking mm. off that. I didn't reply. I didn't reply to nothing because me, drama starts. Mm. I check out. Like, if you start arguing with me, I'm just like, I don't need this. I'm, I'm not even going to bother because I don't have time. And uh, I think what I was going to get at was, like, there's so many women that came out in regards to the Me Too movement. I've seen women who wrote articles, you know, about, like, prominent people. Yeah. And I'm like, boo I know you sexually assaulted me last year. And I didn't say nothing about it. But I'm saying a lot of people live in these glass houses. Yeah. Where they're going to throw these accusations at, at people. And it's going to come back. But their them. behavior themselves is highly questionable in how they interact sexually with people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And... I think especially in this day and age, I feel like everyone wants to look at other people's behavior and throw stones, but rarely are we able to look at ourselves and say, am I behaving in any way that's a little shady, a little mm. bit fucked up? And I think as a comedian, as I look at how everyone around me behaves, I'm always like, damn, like some of y'all shouldn't be saying shit. You oh. know what I'm saying? Abba, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Me too. I wanted to talk about this story with somebody. I, I, Yo, I that's just, fuck though. Yeah, yeah. I meant I as well. No. Yeah, you know what I've done? Uh, similar situation twice with that. And even though it was a few years ago, you know that I still have stored screenshots of the fucked up text just in case. Just in case in a couple of years or something, she's like, ah, oh, he probably doesn't have any of this, this evidence against me. So I'm going to say that it was the reverse, right? So I kept all that shit just in case it ever comes. What are you doing to these girls, Pantelis? <laughs> well, nothing, evidently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, man, don't get case. famous after shit. Um, no, you gotta, yeah, you gotta be super careful. Wait, what just yeah. happened? But that, no, what I did is because she started getting crazy, right? This girl, yeah. And so I kept because they were all nuts. Like, where the fuck are you? No, 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 are you with other? I was like, we ain't even dating. Like, what the fuck, are you, you know? So I blocked. Then she found another ev- avenue to talk to me. This and that. And what I said is, man, she could go. If she's really this mad because she's crazy. She'd go and lie to the cop. She never did. Like, she yeah. didn't go that level. Uh-huh. But I go just in case. I'm keeping all this shit as proof. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because you never know when they'll snap. You never know. And they'll fucking start doing crazy shit. No. So I kept that just in case I still have and, it and it's important to like well, I'm never going to validate the movement because I think there's a lot of shady shit that happens to women and a that's lot. the majority of it I was reading Abba's message and I almost it says double tap to like and he <laughs> 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 just likes it <laughs> that's hilarious yeah no and uh <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, uh, sorry. No, he's no, just on, so proud on. of himself. He's like, well, people are scorned, man. You know, men and women when they're scorned, they, they do some shady shit. People don't like being rejected, you no. know. And that, and, and I just saw a small picture. She looked very attractive. So if you're attractive, and yeah, this goes for men and women. If you're attractive, and you're just used to everyone just like fawning over you, fawning over you, and once you experience rejection for the first time, it's painful. Yeah. Yeah. So, but fuck you. You have such yeah. benefits in life. I'm not going to feel bad for you for yeah. something I deal with. I've been rejected. So many fucking times, yeah. it's unbelievable. On the basketball court. And I never vitriol, there's no vitriol for me I've ever. Because, I mean, listen, 
you don't like me, I, I'm not going to force myself on yeah. you and I'll just accept it. If you as a beautiful person can't handle rejection because you lack the emotional maturity, it's not my responsibility to bear the brunt of your lack of maturity. So while I understand and your explanation is mm. 100% on point, I'm still not going to It's not justified at no, all. No, no, at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, I've, I've seen it. I've seen, You've I've seen, seen it? it? Like... Yeah, I've been in a situation whether I was in a relationship or something. And I'm again, I've been rejected so many times. My so nigga, you'll come here, you know what I'm saying? Ah, like, let's go. For me, I'm not and I've seen I've seen I've seen men and even people who are friends like the way they react to a woman rejecting them, it's like it's disgusting, yeah. you know, and it, it's oh, just like berating them all of a sudden. Oh, I thought like it was you, like a depressed. Oh, you were never. Oh, fuck you! I didn't even like you in the first. It's like, oh man, you're just I protecting love that. your own ego. I love yeah. the line of "I never liked you in the first place." Yeah, I was like, so then why are we gross. having this conversation? <laughs> but yeah, man, I've I've been in a situation where it's like, yeah, objectively, this this girl's a lot more is way higher out of my league, and for whatever reason, I'm like, nah, nah, and then it's just like, you fucking piece of. Sh- I've been berated. Fucking uh, knocking on my door, coming to my house, knocking on my apartment. Yo, Wasim got that good dick. You know what I'm saying? The early <laughs> Wasim digging down these girls so good they go crazy. <laughs> I used to, you know, my D doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I've been talking. Yes, that's crazy. Um, yeah, but yeah, like if the person scorned. Oh God, yeah. jeez, I've had like people fucking so angry. What like, do you mean I'm you're gonna keep worst. that dick away from me? Yeah. Oh. This girl messages me like, yo, he, he, I, I know you, pro- you probably always love me. I'm like, boo-boo, calm down. I rejected yeah. you for a year because I just wasn't that. I just want to fuck you potentially. That's yeah. all That's yeah. all this was. You know what I mean? You don't have to flip. But yeah, just like he said, yeah. when when they want to protect their ego, so they do all these crazy yeah. things. It's not just, it's just, it's Everybody, oh, it's we, do, we do our, uh, not that, we don't go yeah. that fucking crazy. Mm. But you always try to self-preserve, right? You always yeah. have to protect yourself. Yeah. But like that, you do just. You though? Do you I mean, I take an L on the chin. Yeah. I'll take it. But I'll, like, I'll, I'll go up and I ask a girl out and she'll be like, no, I'm like, damn, I'm just not there. Yeah, because to me that's not self-preservation because i don't feel like that's like some kind of a huge loss you know what i mean okay. that's because c- of competition yeah. right like okay it's an l you're gonna take them yeah. you know what i mean yeah that's take it on the chin keep moving forward yeah because you know, that's not my bob whole and weave keep bobbing and weaving Yo, that's not my whole life that's not my entire yeah, life that's not but if you've identity. built up for months this is it this is what i want this is mm-hmm. and i'm gonna get it whatever and that's your whole fucking life and then you go up and the girl the guy's like nah <laughs> Yeah. And you have nothing else yeah. going for you. <laughs> and that's your whole identity. That, is nah, your, yeah, that exactly. like long drawn out, that's killer. Yeah. <laughs> There's certain rejections I've seen go, guys go through that I'm like, ooh, I hurt yeah. for them, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I've, just, I've, I've heard it all. Hey, I've man, heard it if all. You, like if you fucking, I've seen on like, you know, those shitty websites, BuzzFeed or whatever, the Panda, Board Panda, yeah. or like a lot of screenshots of girls and th- this exact thing, guys messaging them. And they're like very kindly, just like nah, I don't, I can't, I'm just not interested. And then like a berate, oh, yeah. you piece yeah. of shit, you're an ugly fucking. But those are crazy people psych. though, because I've seen a lot of those. That's because it literally goes like, hey, what's up? Uh, I really like your videos. Uh, if you're ever in town, would you like to hang out? And the girl's like, ah, I don't really like to hang out with strangers, but thank you very much for that. You fucking slut! I never liked you in the fucking yeah. first place. Like, okay, that's a yeah. crazy person. That's yeah. not a normal. Sure. That's not a normal human being. I don't even think they're crazy. I, I think you'd be shocked at how many people are these I think regular. It's, it's just, common. it's just the you know you, when your self esteem is all based off attractive women and finding beautiful women attractive mm-hmm. in you, and you're life. not able to do that as men. For being honest, a lot of well, you know, our value mm-hmm. comes from our ability to attract mm-hmm. the opposite yeah. sex. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. So when you're never able to do that, and most men aren't, you know, you'd be shocked at how few, how how, how yeah, many. Yeah, we all men, suck at this shit, man. Yeah, but there's hey, whoa, some whoa, men. Whoa, there's some, some us, men some who have no masterful. tools and never get laid. You'd be yeah. shocked at how many dudes like women. A lot of them can still get some because of the way the sexual you know, value works. Women have way more power over a lot of things. It's very actually a, it's a smaller percentage of men who have sex with most women yeah. than the counterpart. Mm-hmm. Right? So, mm-hmm. Some people don't have, and it's not a question of being ugly or not. There's some people that are, are attractive, but they have no game. I don't know how you want to say, it, but they just can't communicate properly yeah. when they're trying to date someone. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason why I'm going to talk about this because we already talked about this on the 4H podcast, so it's not a secret. But you know, my buddy Poseidon, for example. Yeah. Zero game for some reason. So when it came, it's true. So you know how uh, the past two years, you know how we got him to pick up girls? I had to take over his cell phone yeah. and text for him. Yeah. Okay. It, and it came to, it literally came to the point where, bro, this isn't, this girl's not interesting. I'm like, let me see how bad you made it. I go, okay, I can fix this. Don't yeah. open with a dick pic beside him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can fix this. Close with it. And yeah. I would have to take over, but then he would always say the same thing. He's like, bro, I get that date. He goes, but then you're not there. The second I start fucking talking, he goes, I know that what I'm saying is stupid and I shouldn't fucking say it. That lack of confidence. That piece, I've tried know, to do like that, but it's too <laughs> obvious. You've tried to do the earpiece. Yeah, I tried to do the earpiece, but it's too obvious because 
we didn't have the fact that his like joking <laughs> idea was something you really considered. Yeah, we tried it. Well, dude, what do you want? Like, you're not gonna help get the, the frequency boy. right. Yeah. If all he has to do is, but it, it'll fuck him up. That you know, it's too distracting the earpiece. Yeah. But it, there's people uh, like that, and him, it, it's honestly just a question of he's very social. But the second it comes to he's trying to pick somebody up, and I know a lot of people like this, uh-huh. they lose all their game. They they're not cool anymore. They're not calm. They're not. Cl- they're just weird. And that uh, women fucking sense that shit right away. Like, why is he, this guy being weird? Damn, yo, listen, yeah. I, I could spend two hours talking about dating life because I've, I've mm. done so much research projects on it and stuff like a that. Research projects? No, I have. I've dated a lot of women. <laughs> I, got bri- I got bristle boards at home and shit. No, but <laughs> I've actually looked graphs. into... <laughs> he, I when looked he into up, psychology. When he picks up girls yeah. as a notepad, he's like, no, this is for research. For research, yeah. yeah. But, but no, no I've I really done like the research in terms of grad, like the psychology behind it, why so many men struggle, where, what ages they struggle from. And it just really comes mm-hmm. down to uh, we're expected to approach women. We're never mm-hmm. taught the skills. And if you don't have social value, if you're not attractive, then you already have to, you have to have high game. But what does that mean to have high game? How do you get there? How do you get to that place where you're able to converse with women in a way that's endearing to them? So it's very difficult for men to develop those skills because there's nowhere to learn. There's no... So it's mm. Good luck learning plumbing on your own, bitch. That's, that's, the pipes are not easy to figure out. What tools? Yeah. How do you get them? So I learned on the streets. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Where I learned every other skill. Yeah. And, and so and also when this person can reject you in different ways, it's like super difficult. And there's social repercussions for rejections. It affects your social circle. Super so, public. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen dudes oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. Like, it's hard to go back into a club where you get a huge rejection. So um, oh, fuck. I, I, I understand 100% mm. why it's so hard and why so many dudes struggle, but... It just doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me that your friend does struggle. It's like, I would say a good 60% of men probably get little to no sex whatsoever. Yeah, I think there's a huge... 60%. Yeah, yeah. There's a sexodus right now. It's called the sexodus. And uh, a lot of men are just checking out. What are you checking out? They're checking out of dating. They're just... They they don't like the way women are today or whatever. They don't like the fact that they don't have that many opportunities or whatever. So they they just check out of dating altogether. That's fucked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Even if you look at Tinder. Tinder, it's like 20% of men who get laid, they get laid with 80% of the women. Oh, man. uh, When Tinder first came out and I was single, I loved Tinder. Yeah. There was a fucking fiesta, bro. The way he said I love Tinder was just like, yeah. <laughs> was dude, super into, I love Tinder. No, but you know Pause. why? It was literally, when <laughs> it first came out, well, yeah, when, when, when it first bank, came out, know? that's it. Because when yeah. it first came out, it was just so fucking easy. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was way easier when you first, yeah, back, back no. in the day. I think because it was new and everybody was on, guys, girls. Mm. Now I don't know who's on it. It's a lot of girls looking for friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm going to turn it to. But that, uh, that annoys that the fuck rid- out of me. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry. That's I got to... You're come on. You you come on. you got to draw that late. line yeah. there. Yeah. Don't yeah. that's this is not the forum for friends. No, it'd be like being a vegan and fuck going off. to like a meat eaters convention and be like, why is everyone I'm just looking here for to meat? See the meat. Yeah, why why is it you know what I mean? I'm looking for vegans. Like you're not gonna find vegans here, bitch. Like why are you here? Friends swiping <laughs> randomly through a, a just a plethora of strangers. <laughs> I'm sorry. But don't you're supposed that. to fuck them all. You don't it doesn't And they get it mad at you like you're in the wrong place. Like, bitch, you know, you chose yeah, the wrong yeah. app. <laughs> Why don't you make a friend Tinder for friends and then you could download and I won't get mad at you. It's um, called Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's like, you know, there's Girls, uh, guys will argue about that about a club. It's like, oh, why are you here? But that's like, listen, you know, you, it's my friend's birthday. Yeah. I'm not here to. Li- that's yeah. fine. Leave a girl alone. But come on, you went online to download an app that's essentially a hookup app. Yeah. For friends, how hard is it to make friends? Do you go to work? Do you go to school? Talk to the guy. Talk to the girl next to you. Talk to the guy next to you. Yeah. 100%. That's fucking weird. Come I on. mean, I go to the club sometimes to just dance. Like, I have girls approach me. I'm like, I'm yeah. not interested right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it sounds like such a bitch thing, but I'm dead ass serious. And then he says, says, I'm only here to dance with my friends. I, right? no, See, I, I was I, one of the 40%. <laughs> no, just, but I actually go to clubs it. alone. I go to clubs alone. I like going out to dance. It's just something I enjoy yeah. doing. I go out, what like kind going, of dancing? Uh, mostly hip hop and funk. I like to just go out and just have, I like just getting down. You like having a good time. I do. And I go I go out sober by myself. I have a wicked time. And sometimes girls try to fuck up my vibe try to dan- and they can't dance. So I'm like, I don't, they, you, <laughs> dancing with you is not worth fucking you. At I the don't end need of the night. this stress right now. I and he fucking this. face pushes them. Yo, no and you they're... think that's a joke? I swear on my mother's life. I remember they played a song. It was G-Unit, I want to get to know you. And it came on and I got so high. I took the girl's face. I literally moved it sideways like this. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, it's my jam. And she looked at me like, and my friend saw me and he just burst it out laughing. That's hilarious. So I take dancing like that seriously for me. It's that enjoyable. So I'm kind of understanding the text messages towards you. Yeah, the girl's just like... <laughs> we don't know, but he face pushed her. 
I just I like uh, having a good time, and I think if women can yeah. go out and enjoy themselves without being accosted by men, if they can demand that, then I think I should be able to. Can but I, women do not take rejection well. Pretty women do not take it, especially yeah. especially yeah. Not the way you do. If you're it. not used to it, you know no. that's the thing. It's just you feel so scorned. No. Everybody wants me. How, how dare you not want me? Yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred percent. I can already see a scenario where Abba's making out with a girl and there's music playing. Ray's making out with her, and she's like, "Oh my god." I been waiting for this i've been so in love with ab ever since that pie video came out on youtube <laughs> this is great right and then he's like oh he just face pushes bitch g units on <laughs> and he just starts dancing. yo i got high i can't something music does something to me like, and I, then I, the text face. starts coming in she starts crying no I, I, but I, I think women find it also endearing the fact that i'm into my own world and i'm not so after them that it makes it more into that what that I'm makes people more attracted to you but right? yeah can i tell you that it goes back Almost. to what i told you again about how you take rejection right yeah. we have shit going on you're like, yeah, this is a loss, you know, but it's not the end of the world. There's so much shit that I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. But if you don't have anything going on, if you're not doing anything, then that is your world. That's your whole thing. You just lost the World Series, right? Like in your head. Think about how yeah. that is. We, it's hard for us to relate because we're doing a million things at once, right? But imagine if you weren't. Imagine if you only did one thing and that one thing was you fucking chased this broad around for fucking months. That's yeah. all you did. Yeah, you'd be boring. And then you finally talk to her, whatever the fuck happens, and she tells you, go fuck yourself, dude. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Shattering. Mm. That's it. You like hold all this effort. What all your self worth comes from that. From that, because especially in your early twenties, as a guy, most of your self worth comes from how much you get laid. Yeah, because you you're not laid, doing anything, right? 100%. And that's when it's the hard. That's when I fucking had the most trouble trying to meet women because I wanted it so much and I'd like put so much effort and it, it was so hurt because your whole identity is that, right? Again, interestingly, when I started comedy, that's when I st- my identity kind of shifted and yeah. I, like my worth became how well am I doing on stage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it, that that part shifted away, and then interestingly, it just becomes people are more attracted to you because yeah. you don't have that weird desperation no. in no. you. You know, no, and one hundred percent what he says is true because you look at women between the ages of twenty and twenty three, they date older dudes. Yeah, majority yeah. of the time they'll do why yeah. because those guys are more well off. Women will look at the social factors of a male when they look at dating partners. Does he have his own place? Does he have a car? Does he all? Th- I've never given a fuck if a girl has a place. She could live in a cardboard box yeah. and drive a bike around yeah, town and I'll still fuck her. She could work at McDonald's. CEOs will fuck women who've done nothing with their entire lives and they'll do it. How many female CEOs do you hear doing the same thing with men? It's not nearly as common. So women look at the social factors surrounding a potential partner. Well, as men, we just look at the attractiveness. There's a graph. I, I, this is the most indicative dra- dra- graph I've ever seen about how men and women date differently. Uh, women... They did a basically one side was relating to age, and then one side was relating to the woman's age. So the age of the partner and the woman's age. And you saw that as a woman got older, her taste in the partner she had got older. So if you're 28, 23, you want to if you're 28, you want to date people who are 30, 31, all around that age. With men who got older, the same thing stayed. It just went like this: 21 is the age, perfect age for his partner. <laughs> Dead ass serious. Guys so in gross. 35, Ugh. 21. That's that. That was their age. Yeah. That's what they like. That was the average. So you understand that? I don't know if I like 21-year-olds. Huh? I don't know if I like 21-year-olds like to date. Uh, date? Fuck. Yeah, I Just, think we're talking <laughs> physically. Oh, <laughs> fuck is a different story, but... Everything's all ripe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it really is, though. I, I swipe on Tinder, and these 21 year they look yeah. good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I won't do it to 18-year-olds because I, I just mentally can't. It b- bothers me. But a 20-year-old... Yeah, yeah. I could fuck. <laughs> oh, I could definitely fuck any 20... I'm, I'm getting older, and I still fuck 21-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm dead ass here. I'm like, you look good. What do you want yeah. me to say? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't expect uh, your head to be filled with you, knowledge, you, but I, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, there the you go. It's going to get filled with something yeah. else. I, I'm starting to feel like that gross. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm not 30 yet, but I'm still, I'm starting to feel like a gross older dude. Because when I was working the LASIK and I would, I would do like eye exams on all kinds of people, I would see their date of birth. And sometimes it'd be like, a, a female, 1998. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is going to be a nice exam. <laughs> Would I made my sound a lot creepier. Well, yeah, I I, listen, I was very professional with the person. Would I never ever, did anything would you weird, but, but in my like, head, who the fuck said that? Yeah, who knows? Just well, he probably put them to sleep with the gas, and he's like, oh. "Let me work on your eyes." Okay, how dare you? Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa. the nipples! This is, <laughs> this is coming out. The, the Gazette, saying. the Gazette Golden Pony. <laughs> Listen, externally, I was, yeah, I was very professional. <laughs> hey, yeah, if I was dishonest, wait, 1998 as, is what? If I wasn't a creep see. going into it, like, if I, I'm just being honest, you know, and that's, yeah. we're, we're trying to seek truth, right? We're all seeing truth. We're trying yeah. to seek a truth comedy. Fuck, man, this is a great topic. Yeah. I still find it weird that people were born in the 90s. That's the thing. 
before, like, a year is getting me, <laughs> now just a year is getting me aroused. Just the, like, the fucking, yeah. seeing the the date 1997, I'm like, oh, Yeah, what about girls that are born in the 2000s? That's a weird one. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's like, they like, just, like, like, just turning 18 this year. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah, a weird my one. My nephew was born in 2004. Oh, I don't like yeah. that. And I found it yeah. weird. Yeah. And now, now it's getting It's going to be soon, though. No, it's Three not. more years. <laughs> no, no. And you're going to be like, yeah, 2000. I wish I could block this out of my brain. I want these millennial babies. I don't like them because I can't talk to them. I can't relate to them. No, 100%, you can't. Oh, absolutely. I remember I had an 18 year old once. Sure. It was the first time I ever did it. I was 26. And uh, I remember after we had, were done, it was great sex, but after we were sitting there, and she was talking to me, and I was like, oh, this is not worth the sex. Right? You this see? This conversation's not worth the sex. And she really thought she was intelligent, too. She was like, I like being around grown men. And she's like, oh, and I'm like, bitch, I don't want to hear about your political views <laughs> on Bangladesh. Like, you don't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you don't even know where it is. So just don't talk to me about nothing. Like, you're dumb as rocks. So it's not worth it. But 21 year old, it's just, uh, yeah. What happened with those two girls uh, <laughs> at the M bar? I saw you leave with two two broads last time we were there. Were they French M-bar. from France? I, I did not leave with them. They oh. went out for a cigarette and I went home. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I just talk to girls and I, I leave it at that. It's not always like I'm gonna fuck. It's not what I'm implying. I'm yeah, just yeah, asking. Yeah. That's definitely what you, you left with these two girls. That's literally what you plus. got together and we were like, he's having a threesome right now. Yeah. <laughs> what he's doing? Oh gosh. No. We were thinking. Yeah. We put we went back to back. They were eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> they were eighteen. Who was it? They were young. They were young. Yeah. yeah they were eighteen. So I was like, no. I was mad at them because they bounced before they got to watch my set. Yeah. <laughs> but Patel's was, that was upset <laughs> these girls didn't stay. Because I needed more audience. Oh, okay, is that why? Is that, yeah, the is that guy, why? The guy, the guy in front wasn't having fun with me at all. I would ask him questions. Everybody, fu- I was at, he was from New York. I was asking him simple questions like, you know, what he does, just to fucking get a feel for the audience. And this motherfucker was having none of it. Like, he thought, oh, the next thing's going to be a punchline against me. Yeah. Unless he would cross his arms and fuck off. Or maybe your set just sucked. And <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, well, yo, we got to wrap this up because I'm already way late. Yeah, I was about to tell you, mother. Oh. You were supposed to be gone an hour ago. I know. I texted him to let him know I'm going to be 30, 40, so I, I give you more time because okay, I thought okay. we were getting some interesting shit. We were getting it some was interesting fun. shit. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Abba, uh, Wasim, I'm going to put all your shit in the description so people can follow you because it's too long to tell them. Thanks for coming on. Abba and Preach on YouTube, Wasim in the Gazette front page <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Twitter handle? In the Wasim? classified section. What's your Twitter handle? It's Matt Brown. Oh, yeah, you Matt look Prender like or something. Really? Yeah, it's M-A-T-P-R-E-N-D-E-R. I didn't know I was going to be the Gazette. Wow, shit. Always this could... nigga really chose the Frenchest shit I ever. I always to... Listen, me. at the time, I was so obsessed with that. Fr- I'd just come back from Korea, and I was just laughing at... I hadn't spoken French in so long, and everyone's like, because I was trying to speak French again, and I'm like, what the... F-? I never noticed how rid- r- ridiculous Matt Brown is, and I was Matt obsessed Brown. with it. Got Twitter, had that, and now I'm, now I'm like... If I change my fucking handle, all of my history Are of you my on amazing now, tweets Abba? goes away. No. Because he refused. He said something about, although I'm not going to let the white man I thought you were on Twitter. Down or... You just got it, no? No, no. no. He's on I've Instagram. had a Twitter for like seven years. I've never posted one. Oh, uh, okay. So sometimes I get tagged and stuff. I'm like, sure, whatever. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's so, what we got. Thank you. All right, thanks for having us, man. Thank you.